Hello and welcome to the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. This is stage two starting and finishing at Falls Creek. Well, that was the plan. More on that in a moment. It now starts at Mount Beauty at the bottom of Falls Creek before racing to the top of the mountain. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Commonwealth Games gold medalist Rochelle Gilmore. Rochelle, the weather has closed in. There's been some changes to the course. More on that in a moment. Yesterday, it was Alina Sierra who took the first stage and she has the yellow jersey. It was an impressive win by her yesterday. It was. The team stayed so relaxed through the crosswinds and everything. They had the full team there, so they had a textbook win, actually. So for Elena Sierra, everything went well, and I think she'll be motivated to, even though she's a pure sprinter, really try and see what she can do today, how long she can hang on. This is Falls Creek, and you can see that the roads are wet at the moment, and throughout the winter months, it's full of snow. It's one of the great alpine destinations in Victoria, around about a four to four and a half hour drive from the centre of Melbourne, depending on whether you stop by the roadside for a break or not. And of course, we do recommend that you do stop to break up the drive. It is also just outside of Mount Beauty, which is the town that is at the bottom of Falls Creek. At the top of the mountain, it's not just the skiing that is available. There's plenty of bike riding. There's the lake as well. There's mountain biking. It's very popular for mountain biking. At the bottom of the mountain, at Mount Beauty, they've hosted plenty of Australian mountain bike championships. And this is not the only mountain to climb in this region. There's plenty of other ones to climb up here as well. It's not too far away from Mount Hotham. There's also Bright, which is near Falls Creek. It is a beautiful spot. We've had the men's race this afternoon. The women's race is about to get underway. And Rochelle, the changes to the course, I wonder if it will change the final outcome. Well, it may do. It'll definitely change the dynamics of the race. I mean, the best climbers will still be there at the finish, but there was some riders who were a little bit funny about taking out the descent, but of course it looks like it's, it's quite wet and it was a heavy downpour of rain, so change of course. Um, I think it just makes it all a little bit more exciting today. It was right on cue for the rain. They had the sign on before the riders got into the team cars and then it drove down to the bottom. This was at the sign on a little earlier on. This is the Uni Staminade team getting themselves organised. Rock Salt Attacker. This is Justine Barrow, one of the best climbers in the race. There's a couple of contingents from New Zealand and there's a few Kiwis that we'll be looking for today, particularly Shamara Shepherd, who rode well overall in this race last year when she finished in fourth position. Lots of discussion at the sign-on about the course changes. We'll hear from a few of the riders shortly. But the sign-on can be a nervous moment for many of the riders that have got high hopes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a, a lot of riders will have high hopes for today because there's nothing to lose. There's no stage tomorrow. This is the final stage. Everything uh, went to plan. Maybe a little bit harder race yesterday than some of the riders expected. We certainly didn't expect it to break up the way that it did. It went into the gutter. Um, and that was uh, mainly due to the two teams Team Tipco and Mitchell and Scott, they're the, right, they're the teams that really put it in the gutter and made it hard yesterday. So there'll be some tired legs, but I think a lot of riders that want to s test themselves and just see how far they can go today. It was the Tipco team yesterday that really did take the initiative, and then Mitchelton Scott, they responded. They have the defending champion, Lucy Kennedy, who is one of the favourites, not just to win the stage today, but to win the race overall. And if you do win the stage today, odds are that you do win the race overall unless of course Alina Sierra finishes in second position right on the wheel whoever, whoever wins today. I think that's the fight that we're going to see today. Lucy Kennedy is the outright favourite. She's, um, she's a former winner of this race and she really really wants to. She wears number one. She's taking on all the pressure of being the favourite so I think taking out this descent at the start will also put her in a very positive mood. mood. Generally we see that the climbers are not really great descenders so I think as much as Lucy's skills have really developed over the last few years. Um, she'll be relieved that there's not that nervousness of the descent to get down at the start. At 2.20, between 2.20 and 2.30, the riders got into their team cars and they made the descent down Falls Creek en masse in the convoy. And there will have been quite a few riders that will be very pleased with this decision. And as you can see, when they were leaving, the clouds had opened up and there was even a few cracks of thunder as they were jumping into the cars. Yeah, we're pretty high up here um, at Falls Creek. We're at uh, 1,780 metres, so it is quite high, and you do get tend to get weather like this. The sun's shining one moment, a huge downpour, and uh, I think 
The fact that there was forecast for thunder and lightning and we felt a little bit of that, we not only heard it, but we did feel those cracks of thunder. So that's when the decision was made to uh, drive the riders down to the bottom and it uh, really does shorten their stage. They'll race about 45 kilometres now. So that's when you tend to see more aggressive racing as well. On arrival this morning, it was shorts and t-shirt weather. Now it's pants and a jumper weather. Let's hear from some of the favourites for today's stage. Hot topic change, of course, today. What's your thoughts? Yeah, we're, we're a little bit bummed. We were really looking forward to the descent. We think um, we've, we've got enough skills to be able to handle that descent and um, potentially put some time into the climbers that can't descend so well. Um, so to have that taken out, we're a bit bummed, but still we're, we're fairly confident in, in our climbing abilities. Yeah, I'm really excited about today's stage. Um, it's, uh, yeah, the race is just going to tear apart up the climb and um, it's a 30 kilometre climb about an hour 20 long so yeah it's really exciting. Uh, it's a new sport for me like uh, in terms of haven't done much racing uh, really leading into this at all so um, yeah really excited for the opportunity to race some, some big names. Yeah, I think we have a few cards to play. We've also got a couple of girls who could go for stages after losing some time. Emily has been progressing through the summer. Um, she had amazing results to start with, but her legs weren't great, and I had to tell people her legs are amazing, so watch out. Well, Peter Mullins at the back end there. She's one of the riders who does have exceptional bike handling skills, and she would have liked to have raced it down this mountain. And she's a rider that's won Australian titles on the velodrome, on the dirt as a mountain biker, and the Australian road title. Yesterday, she was one of the riders who missed the split initially, and then she bridged across along with Matilda Reynolds to rejoin the front of the race. This will look back at stage one. It started and finished in Shepparton, and the weather conditions yesterday, Rochelle, were perfect for spectating, perfect for a gentle bike ride, but they were pretty still in terms of wind, which made it difficult to cause any splits. The first of the intermediate sprints that was taken out by Alexandra Martin-Wallace, it was then Tibco who caused the damage in the last 30 kilometres. Yeah, this was the big su surprise, Matt, because we were just settling in thinking, OK, it's a cruisy stage, not enough wind to break it up. A lot of attacks were going, but nothing was staying off the front. And then we saw this move and riders just started going out the back. There's Lucy Kennedy, your favourite for today's climb up to Falls Creek. The second of the intermediate sprints, it was Peter Mullins who took the win there ahead of Lauren Stevens. Lauren Stevens is another rider that people are talking about as a factor today. Ruby Roseman Gannon was in third position across that intermediate sprint. The chasing group, they were at 30 seconds behind. They got within 15 seconds at one point. It looked as if they might have made contact, but with one kilometre to go, it was the teams of the sprinters getting themselves organised. Through the last corner, Gracie Elvin was trying to set things up for Jessica Roberts. The Astana team, though, they had it all under control, and it was Alina Sierra in the white jerseys, the Cuban champion, who took the win. Anna Trevisi in the fluoro on the left was in second position. It was then Ruby Roseman Gannon who was in third place on the stage. And for Alina Sierra, the stage victory also brings with it the race leader's yellow jersey. Yeah, that yellow jersey normally comes with a lot of pressure, but I think Alina Sierra will feel more motivated than pressure today because it's not her type of stage but she'll uh, definitely want to test herself and just see how far she can get up this climb with the leaders. Let's now take a look at the course for Tule Stage 2. Well, the original course, 75.2 kilometres, starting and finishing at Falls Creek. They were to descend down through Bogon Village, then there was a little bit of a climb before heading to Mount Beauty. Now the race actually starts in Mount Beauty. They'll go through to Wonga South for the first of the intermediate sprints, back into Mount Beauty for the second of the intermediate sprints. Could prove to be important time bonuses. And then they still have the 30 kilometre climb to the top of Falls Creek. And you can see that second part of the elevation, this is what you spoke about earlier, Rochelle. It's a long way up to the top of Falls Creek. Yeah, some of the uh, better climbers have said that it's not a particularly tough climb, but I came up there in the car today, Matt, and I thought it was a brutal climb. It just doesn't really let up. It's 30 kilometres from the bottom to the top. There is a few sections where it flattens out, but uh, it's certainly a tough climb. I think it's really for the pure climbers today. It doesn't have to be that steep when it's that long. Yeah, when it's that long in itself, that's what's going to go in the favour of the pure climbers. Uh, they'll just tie the legs of the other riders and it'll just become too much for the sprinters, I think. Um, they'll try, try their absolute best, but if the climbers are on good form today, 
I think it's a day for them. One of the favourite climbers is Lucy Kennedy. She won this race last year. Let's her hear from her talking tactics. Uh, talking Tactics, stage two of the Lexus of Blackburn Women's Herald Sun Tour, uh, Falls Creek to Falls Creek, which is actually no longer Falls Creek to Falls Creek. It is now Mount Beauty to Falls Creek. Got a bit of weather rolling in, so we've cancelled, they've made the decision to cancel the descent. I don't think that's going to change the race too much. It was always going to basically come down to the climb, I think. Um, yeah, 40-odd 40, 40 kilometres, really, really short stage, but definitely still a tough one. Um, I think some people are going to be pretty aggressive up the climb. A few people lost some time yesterday, so might be looking to make that up. Um, not a super hard climb, but solid enough. Gets harder as you go up, so just be ready, ready to go. She does look ready and ready to go. I was really impressed with her performance yesterday in conditions that she doesn't like, and that is a sign that she's in fine form for today. Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing to see that she's still developing. She's one of the best bike riders in the world when it comes to climbing, but uh, there's the weak spots are getting stronger for Lucy Kennedy. So yesterday, uh, she wouldn't have liked a stage like that, but she handled it very well, stayed relaxed. She didn't have a full team on the start line, so she only had three teammates, but they, uh, they worked very well to protect her. And she obviously said, 5Ks from the finish, you guys race now, and I'll just take care of myself, which shows a lot of confidence. It was an outstanding performance by Lucy Kennedy. The conditions that she does struggle with the most are flat days, where there is a crosswind and that's exactly what she encountered yesterday and she did not put a foot wrong. I feel like yesterday was another big step forward because that isn't about horsepower yesterday. It's about the, being comfortable within the peloton. It's rubbing shoulders in many respects and it's saying to the other riders, don't get in my way. I belong. Yeah, and I think the challenge of the crosswinds uh, for Lucy would be the, you know, you've got a very small section of road if you want to be under the wheel and protected, and that's where I think she would get quite nervous. But yesterday she managed to stay, even without her teammates, you know, under the wheel, protected out of the wind. So it was a, a big step forward, I think, for her confidence heading back over to Europe. Uh, she has no reason now to be scared of those um, crosswinds and echelons. One of the riders who missed the split momentarily yesterday was Peter Mullins, and she's a rider who is normally causing those splits. She's also a rider who spoke before today's stage got underway, and she was a little disappointed that they're not racing down Falls Creek. Here she is, the former Australian road champion, Peter Mullins. Peter Mullins, Rock Solid Attacker, presented by SRAM, is that correct? That, that yeah, is SRAM true, yes. yeah. So, Peter Mullins, uh, Rock Solid Attacker, presented by SRAM and Liv. Well, how do you find this, the change of the stage? You look like you're a little bit angry. I feel like you've come to me to get some profanities. <laughs> I've just put a story up on Instagram, and my opinion is if it's too dangerous to race down a hill, it's too dangerous to race. It's not even raining. We've nearly got clear skies. I think we race down the hill. What about the safety first and the safety of the riders? Obviously, that's important. We know you care about that, but you would prefer to race down. Yeah, I think so. I think we all know our own limits. Uh, we crash on straight roads, we crash in crosswinds, we crash on corners. If we took all that out of bike racing, well, we've just got a velodrome, really. So I think we're here to race our bikes, and I think an all-round bike rider would suit today's stage. I think it will change the outcome of the race. Uh, and, yeah, I'm really disappointed. Well, what about the flat part before we come up uh, Falls Creek across to Bogong and up to here to Falls Creek for the finish? Does that mean that's going to be even more aggressive now? Well, I think it, it changes the dynamic of the bike race before we get to the flat section, which will change the dynamic for things like the sprint jersey, for potential early breakaways. There's less time now. Uh, I think the hill climbers will be satisfied with this result. Uh, and the 50 seconds will probably not play the part that we thought it would in the race from yesterday's split. And Emily Herfoss, well, she's one of the best climbers, Justine Barrow also, and they're both on your team. Who can get the job done today for you? Yeah, I think we have a few cards to play. We've also got a couple of girls who could go for stages after losing some time. Emily has been progressing through the summer. Um, she had amazing results to start with, but her legs weren't great, and I had to tell people her legs are amazing, so watch out. <laughs> Fantastic. Peter Mullins, all the best. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Shots fired there by Peter Mullins. She wanted to race and then a warning about the form of Emily Herfoss. I love the attitude of Peter Mullins. Yeah, she's always uh, very entertaining and says what she thinks. And, I mean, I'm disappointed too that we don't get to see what Peter Mullins could have done on that descent. She would have absolutely loved it. And uh, she is right that uh, there's a significant time gap to some really good climbers. So it could have made a huge difference to the the outcome of the race. The race would have been a little bit different had they uh, have started at the top. But uh, yeah, safety first, organisers call. So they've made the uh, call. That
Can you start, start one minute location before we get the riders the underway? One, the one minute to go, we just heard the voice of David McKenzie letting the riders know that there's one minute before they start. You can see the colours of specialised women's racing en masse at the front of the peloton. What's missing for them is a team car in the convoy. Their team car has been ejected from the convoy yeah, today to for two, feeding we'll for too out. long and holding onto the water bottle with one of their riders, Holly Harris, who was caught out the back yesterday after she was accidentally run off the road by the Thailand national champion, Manifan. So strong reprimand for the specialised women's racing team. They roll out. The uh, Bright Brewery green jersey is being worn today on loan by Anna Travisi of the LABTC Ljubljana team. She was second on the stage yesterday. She's a former teammate of yours, and you made the comment earlier on at sign-on that she looks to be in as good a condition as you've ever seen her at this point in the season. Yeah, absolutely. And I did get to congratulate her after the stage, and she's beaming with confidence. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely in the form of her life, and she's got herself into some good conditions. So... You know, I started racing with her, we were super, super young, and um, she's developed into uh, a bit of more of an all-rounder. She's certainly not uh, going to be in the featuring and the finish and the climbs here, but uh, super fit, and uh, you could see how frustrated she was with that second place yesterday, just banging the handlebars when she crossed the line. So she has big expectations from herself and a big opportunity yesterday to take a stage win in a UCI event. So pretty disappointing for her to just miss out on that, but she has come a very long way, so... We'll see how Anna Trevisi goes today. She's in the bright fluoro colours of LA. The red flag being held by the race director, John Trevorrow, a three-time winner of the uh, Jayco Herald Sun Tour. This is the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. And last year's winner is back to defend her title, Lucy Kennedy. But the yellow jersey in the centre of the picture, that has been worn by Alina Sierra of the Astana team. She has a few teammates with her. There's an intermediate sprint very early on. They leave Mount Beauty. The next town is Tawonga South. That's where the first of the two intermediate sprints will be contested. Three-second time bonus there. Alina Sierra, she's already collected 10 seconds worth of time bonuses yesterday for the stage victory. If she can pick up the two intermediate sprints and then just fight and hold on, you never know. She could be the surprise winner of this race overall. Well, it will be interesting to see if she goes for that first sprint. My guess is that she will, and she'll have all of her team around her, and it just puts her in a stronger position. She wouldn't be so familiar with the strength of the other domestic um, national team climbers or national NRS riders here, so she needs to just get those time bonuses to have a little bit more um, up her sleeve when she gets to the final moments of the climb, if she can actually get there. It'll be interesting to see. I'd like to see, because normally a sprinter in uh, races that are hilly, they get the day off. They get told, just take care of yourself, look after yourself. But uh, today's the final stage, so why not uh, empty the tank and just see how far you can go. Just about ready to hit kilometre zero. There it is. Through this sign, they'll just be about two kilometres away from the intermediate sprint. Just about to get the all clear. Lots of riders going past the lead vehicle. Well, they're being asked to stop now for kilometre zero. So race director John Trevorrow just talking to the riders. Not sure what's happened here. Waiting for the all clear at the front of the race. We saw yesterday, this is Wayne Pomero, he is the Chief Commissaire. He's one of the Commissaires. And let's roll is the call from Wayne. We saw yesterday there were riders with mechanical problems and the race did wait for them to rejoin, but they normally rolled through the neutral zone. The Chief Commissaire, incidentally, is Louise Jones. Wayne Pomario is one of the other officials. Now the race is underway, and as soon as the flag comes in, the first attack goes. Yeah, and I think right at the start here, we might see some of these first early attacks close down simply because those time bonuses are on offer at the intermediate sprint. So it's uh, Rock Salt Attacker just closing that down. It could be Peter Mullins that we heard from. Disappointed about not doing the descent. She'll be eager to get up the road and just make something of this race. And that is Peter Mullins in second position. It's a Velo Project women's racing team that is at the front trying to cause the split. A reaction coming from Corda Mentha, likewise with the specialised women's team. Not a nice start there. It was slightly uphill. Well, so one was... rider has also gone off to the grass. There's a real fight for positions at the front of the peloton. Sorry, Rochelle, that was just on the left-hand side of the screen. Elbows are flying. 
Yeah, we knew it was going to be an aggressive start at such a short stage and with those time bonuses on offer very early in the stage, we knew it would go out of the gun, but there'll be some sore legs there too without much of a warm up with the uh, change of the stage start. Number 84 at the back of the peloton for Rock Salt Attacker, that is Bree Wilson. We've seen stages shorten significantly in the Tour de France. We saw that last year, that happened on the final mountain stage. Famously in 1996, there was a stage that was scheduled to be 200 kilometres and it got shortened to 40 kilometres and finished at the top of the climb of Sestriere. It basically was a climb from the bottom to the top. Chloe Moran is in this group. She's the rider in the white colours of the quarter Mentha Australian national team and Samara, Samara Shepherd, Shepherd of New Zealand. She's yeah. got your attention. She certainly has. So she's in the break, probably the best climber of this break and uh, she'll be keen to keep the pace high. It'll be interesting to see. We wouldn't imagine this will stay away, but uh, a handy little break right from the gun. And Taryn Heather for Specialised Women's Racing. She's the rider on the left-hand side of the road, number 94. This is a handy little move. Yeah, I think there's a lot of riders in the uh, back in the peloton that would like to close this down with the strength that's up there in the breakaway. Ella Wollaston is the other one. You can see the sign indicating 500 metres to the first of the intermediate sprints. Yeah, we think that's what Peter was after too, just to be out there and have a go. But the uh, GC contenders might be a bit disappointed that they miss out on the points. But uh, let's see how the New Zealander does, because she's the best climber of this breakaway. Well, Mullins, she spends a fair bit of time at the Bright Brewery when she comes up here for training camps. So she clearly wants to win the Bright Brewery points classification. Yep. She's definitely, if you see uh, Peter Mullins, it's the rider at the back now. She looks like she's a pure little climber, but she's actually a, a sprinter. Here comes the peloton chasing those points. It might even be the team of Elena Sierra up near the front, hoping to get those time bonuses. It was. It was the Astana team doing the chasing. Peter Mullins won the second intermediate sprint yesterday, and she will win the first of the intermediate sprints today. Into Tawonga South, the battle for the green jersey, and maybe not. Mullins has just been pipped. Wollaston, perhaps it is, that's managed to get over the top of her. Well, that will be tight on the line. That was for the minor placings in third position. And it's Ella Wollaston, who was in the break, that has managed to collect the maximum points. Yeah, a long sprint from Peter Mullins. She hit out very, very early for that sprint and uh, paid for it dearly in the end. But uh, now these two riders will have formed a little bit of a gap and it'll be interesting to see if they push on. I know after Peter Mullins gets a breath, she will want to push on with this. So they're joined by a few riders on the peloton. Just a few riders are still split up a little bit. It's the perfect time for the breakaway to move. If they turn left, they go over to Wonga Gap and then they would descend down into Bright. It's a climb that is well known to particularly the Victorian cyclists that spend a lot of time in the high country training. You see the white jersey near the back, number 25, that's Charlotte Lucas, she's the Oceana champion. Here's the winner of the intermediate sprint at the back, Ellie Wollaston. Good performance in that intermediate sprint, she timed her run well. She's one of the riders that's eligible for the Visit Victoria white jersey as the best young rider. Speaking of which, the leader of that classification, 115, Ruby Roseman Gannon. She slipped across to the breakaway. Yeah, nice move from Roseman Gannon. She was uh, third yesterday. Very impressive. But uh, 144, Wollaston, she'll still be breathing deep, recovering from that long, tough sprint that she just did. So just hanging off the back there, trying to get her breath and back on that wheel of Peter Mullins. But uh, it is a nice, handy little breakaway. Um, some strength in there. They've just gone across the top of that little rise and it looks as if she's about to be distanced. Let's take a look at that sprint once again. Peter Mullins at the back of the group. She checks across the shoulder. She realises that the peloton is closing in. So she breaks ranks first and then Wollaston responds. Yeah, she was forced to go early there. Perhaps if she hadn't looked over her shoulder that soon, she may have made it to the finish line. But she was forced to go a little bit early, knowing that the peloton was coming, which really set it up for Wollaston. But it was a long, hard sprint. And uh, now we see Wollaston really struggling to get back onto that group. She knows it's now or never. She's got to get there now on this little bit of a descent. A slight respite here as she goes over the top of that small climb through the pretty little town of Tawonga South. 
not too far away from making a right-hand turn and then they take the back roads to return into Mount Beauty and then they're not all that far away actually, only 9.6 kilometres away from Fish to Falls Creek. kilometres, whereas the breakaway riders, they just want to get as much time as they can before they hit that climb proper. And it's Tipco on the front of the peloton. Samara Shepard in the breakaway, so too Peter Mullins. Kate Perry has managed to make it across for Specialised Women's Racing. Or is that Taryn Heather who is still there? Number 94, Taryn Heather. looking to see oh well, Perry has made it so Perry is I wasn't seeing things Kate Perry and Taryn Heather both in there for specialized women's racing that's Kate Perry who leads them around the right hand turn and in the white visit Victoria best young rider jersey that is Ruby Roseman Gannon who was one of the riders Rochelle at the start today who said I actually like racing in the rain yeah there's a lot of riders that, that do they've got dry roads now at the moment so but this is uh, quite a strong breakaway group with Kate Perry Ruby Rose McGannon there, Peter Mullins. We've got uh, Ali Wollaston now on the back there, just taking a few deep breaths. Number 94, Taryn Heather as well. So there's a lot of strength there. With 38.4 kilometres to go. Only about nine kilometres before they hit the climb though. And uh, as we said, they'll, you can just see there now how far they have got. And the pellets are not too, uh, I don't think they're too concerned about this map. They're just uh, rolling along trying to keep them probably in eyesight but um, not too too bothered about they know that it'll all play out once they hit the climb incidentally of the riders in that breakaway group ruby roseman ganners is the best placed in the general classification she is six seconds behind the yellow jersey of alina sierra but peter mullins well she started the day at seven seconds behind so with that time bonus she's at five seconds behind so she's now the best placed in the general classification from that leading group We'll be talking about more than seconds between those riders by the end of the day. I'm fairly confident in saying that. Yeah, I think you might be right, Matt. It's, uh, it's a long climb. I think there'll be huge um, time gaps as well. If they race from the bottom, I mean, I think it'll be fantastic to see some fireworks go right from the bottom and uh, just see who is actually really the best over a 30 kilometer climb. I mean, sometimes, oh, we can see this is just naturally coming back to as well. Yeah, they have been reeled back in. The Tipco team, number 21, you can see at the back from that team, that's Lauren Stevens. She was good yesterday. She sits in fourth position in the general classification. She is a chance. She's got good climbing legs. Yeah, I think Lauren Stevens has a chance. Uh, she's not known as a pure climber, but she is a bit of an all-round rider, so she's definitely one that we can watch today. One of the riders I'm very interested to see how they do today is Sarah Gigante. You know, a sensation for Australian cycling last year with the uh, win at the Australian National Championships. Be very yeah. interesting to see how she goes today. In the general classification, she finds herself 59 seconds behind the race leader, Alina Sierra, and 49 seconds behind the defending champion, Lucy Kennedy. So the current Australian time trial champion, Sarah Gigante, she's got a bit of time she needs to make up. Yeah, for general classification, I think that's a little bit of a big ask, but uh, she'll also just see this as an opportunity to see where she's at on a 30 kilometre climb. So we know she can climb very, very well. The race is all back together again. That breakaway attempt has been caught. They're out of Tawonga South and Lucy Kennedy, the defending champion, is currently sitting comfortably in the peloton. It's exciting to be coming back to the Herald Sun Tour this year. It's I believe it's the first race that I've come to as defending champion and um, being able to pin number one on my jersey is pretty cool. We've been here at Mitchelton Wines for the last couple of days since the Cadell Evans race. Uh, absolutely enjoying it. It's the first time I've had the pleasure of staying here. Uh, so we've been enjoying these beautiful surroundings and eating some lovely local food and just generally relaxing. The accommodation here at Mitchelton Wines has been outstanding. Uh, for a race hotel, um, just a step above everything. Um, beautiful comfortable rooms and nice pool and just lovely grounds around it. Every other race hotel has got a lot to <laughs> live up to. We rode through Nagambi this morning, it was the first time I'd actually ridden through Nagambi. It's a really lovely little town actually there on the, on the lake. We sat and had a co coffee by the lake. But between training and racing I like to um, eat a lot. <laughs> I'm a bit of a foodie so I enjoy eating good food and 
drinking coffee, spending time with friends and just generally trying to not think about cycling too much actually, get away from it a little bit. There's no getting away from it right now for Lucy Kennedy. She's in the thick of the action as she races towards Falls Creek, which is Victoria's premier alpine resort with its first ski tow installed in 1951. Originally, it was constructed to facilitate the queer hydraulic scheme and it now has over 92 ski runs. It's been elevated significantly as a cycling destination in the last 20 or 30 years and has more than 40 kilometres worth of mountain bike trails. For Lucy Kennedy, those little flurries of attack at the start, they won't have hurt her legs too much. What they will have done, though, will have hurt the legs of some of her rivals. Peter Mullins has spent a bit of energy early. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a tough climb for Peter Mullins with the energy that she put in right from the start. So it's, um, it's going to be an interesting stage because there are riders that we just don't know how they, they're going to fare over a 30 kilometer climb. So. Well, you're hearing reports of a crash at the back of the peloton. And this is a look at what happened at the back of the peloton. Just a touch of wheels. Hard fall there for the quarter mentor Australian rider. And a rider and from the specialised team going down as well. Madeline Wright caught up behind that fall. And the rider that has gone down for quarter mentor is Georgia Whitehouse. And one of the Astana riders also having hit the deck. The rider from the step forward team is Julia Atkins who has ridden away. She has been delayed. Well, not looking Francesca good. Sewell as well, perhaps. This is Pataro, who was very handy yesterday in translating the interview with the stage winner. Fantastic. Very impressive, that translation, wasn't it? So we were having uh, the writer from Astana, who's unfortunately just fallen. She was translating for the Cuban, Elena Sierra, who was speaking in Spanish. The writer from Astana was speaking in Italian, translating the English. So uh, a very um, talented writer and handy writer to have race interviews. Um, Elena Sierra can speak English but a little bit reluctant. This is Kate Perry from the Specialised Women's Racing Team who has gone out in front on her own. There's 35.6 kilometres remaining in the race. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Rochelle Gilmore, the 2010 Commonwealth Games gold medalist. And we're also joined by a woman who would rather not be with us. She'd rather be racing. The former Junior World Time Trial Champion, Jessica Allen. Firstly, before we talk about the race, how was your arm after the crash on Saturday? Yeah, it's much better, Matt. Um, luckily, I got it checked out on the second opinion on Monday. Um, I was feeling a bit ill on Sunday, and a bit of an infection got into my um, cut my elbow. So, had some plastic surgery, and all's good. I just need a week off the bike, and I'll be back to it. Frustrating being on this side of the fence as opposed to being out there racing and helping your team. Yeah, always. Particularly when we have low numbers now, it's always a bit sad to start with only four riders and being a home race as well. I really wanted to help Lucy Kennedy back up her win from last year but unfortunately it's part of racing and we still got four strong girls out there and I think they can do the job. No racing down Falls Creek today. What was your reaction to hearing the news that all the riders will be getting in the team cars and driving down to the bottom? Yeah, it is always disappointing because um, I think it could have changed the race slightly. Um, I still think the race is going to be made on the hill but um, the race organisers, you know, it's up to them to make the most important decision and that's the safety of the cyclists so I support their decision today. This is Kate Perry, who's off the front on her own. A lot of the international riders wouldn't know Kate Perry, but she's very strong. She's formed really well. Big races have of Bright, which is just over the other side of Tawonga Gap. Yeah, Kate Perry is a phenomenal bike rider. I've actually uh, raced quite a bit with her in the National Road Series and also at the National Championships. I was in a breakaway with her a few years ago, and she's a super strong rider. And yeah, I think you know she can try get ahead of the field here. I don't think she's going to win the stage today, um, but yeah, it's good honour for having a crack out there early. Who do you see as the big threats to Lucy Kennedy? There's a few, I think. Um, the New Zealand rider Samara. Um, I didn't know much about her until uh, I saw her on the Canyon team trying to get the Zwift Academy scholarship. Um, and yeah, she's proved to be a very strong rider. Uh, riders like Sarah Gigante, she lost a bit of time yesterday, so she needs to make that up today. Uh, Jamie Gunning. Um, yeah, Ru Ruby Roseman Gannon. Also Lauren Stevens um, and Sirara, yeah. They're just around about two kilometres away from the second of the intermediate sprints as they make their way back into Mount Beauty. 
the, the back of the peloton, number 114. That's Alexandra Martin-Wallace. The young Australian teams have been riding really well. Have you been impressed this year with Ruby Roseman Gannon? Absolutely. Uh, Ruby's had a, an awesome year, and not just this year. I've been watching Ruby for the last few years, and um, I'm not surprised at all how well she's performed. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's riding for some big teams in the next couple of years. Back at the peloton, we see number 23, Sarah Gigante. She's one of those riders at the moment, a little bit like Lucy Kennedy has been over the last couple of years. Not super comfortable riding in the pointy end of the peloton, in the business class seats where you have to rub elbows a little bit. Ironically, the business class seats have the least room in the peloton. Down the back in economy, you've got a bit more breathing space. That's it. Down the back, you have a bit more space, but as you just saw before, you're also more prone to crashes and mishaps. So, um, yeah, Sarah, she's improved a lot. Um, I raced on the same team with her at Baycritz this year, and I was very impressed with her cornering skills um, compared to last year. So she's a young rider, and, yeah, they're just going to get better for her, and it's, it's good she realises that, and she's going to be a super strong rider. Rochelle Kate Perry, she's not too far away from heading back into Mount Beauty, 100 metres before she hits the second of the intermediate sprints in the battle for the Bright Brewery points classification. And I think I spotted Anna Trevisi near the front of the peloton, perhaps ready to contest the sprint for second place. Kate takes a look across her shoulder, and it is Ruby Roseman Gannon who gets the points. Ruby B. Roseman Gannon, again, second position in the sprint for her. And it wasn't Trevisi that went across the line. The next across the line was Chasina, the Russian rider from the LA team. So another impressive sprint from Ruby Roseman Gannon. Every opportunity that she has to show herself, I think there's, uh, there's European directors watching this race. So it's um, even if she's not quite sure how she's going to climb and how she's going to finish, on, uh, you know, that's really hard 30 kilometre climb up to Falls Creek. She still wants to get her name out there and show people what she's got. So she certainly has during this tour here at the uh, Lexus of Blackburn Women's Herald Sun Tour. Well, she's also studying at the moment. She's got six subjects to go. She's studying at Melbourne University. Uh, she's going to do some of that by correspondence this year because she's going to spend some more time racing and travelling around the country, hopefully doing a lot of the National Road Series races. She's studying not just any old degree, she's doing science and neuroscience. Yeah, that's super impressive. And what a show off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can one person have so much talent? I think good on her. You Fantastic, do, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. And it's super important, particularly as women cyclists, to, to keep your education up and have part-time jobs if you need as well. And I think good on her. This is Kate Perry out in front, riding for the Specialised Women's Racing Team. They've got one of the best kits in the peloton. Interesting. It's uh, uh, Kate Perry. Yes, we're back with the leader, Kate Perry. She's just having a look over her shoulder, but uh, it's a common colour too in the peloton at the moment. So, one of the classier looking kits. She does a lot of coaching as well, Kate Perry. And there was at one point where she was also working at the Australian Open and riding the Australian Summer of Cycling. She was spending 12 hours on her feet at the Australian Open and then coming out and finishing in the top five at the national championships in the individual time trial. Yeah, that's super impressive. Quite a few riders, particularly at the NRS level, they do work full-time jobs. Um, we were speaking earlier, a lot of these the riders in the peloton are also doctors and have very significant jobs and they're still out there doing a good job for their team. And I think if you have a balanced lifestyle, um, you can do anything. Well, amongst the riders that were caught up in that fall before, one of the riders from the court of men, the Australian national team, was Francesca Sewell. And Francesca is another one of those young Australians that is making her way up through the ranks. She's still in the under-19 category. And last year, in her first season in the under-19s, she won the road race and the time trial at the national championships. That's a lot of talent for one person to have. Yeah, absolutely. So at the back of the peloton, there'll be a lot of riders here, I could imagine, Jess, that are just waiting to get onto the climb and then hoping that their legs have recovered from yesterday. That's it. It's a long climb today. Um, it's a bit of an interesting climb. It's not as steep as, um, as maybe someone like Lucy Kennedy or the Pugh climbers would like, but even though it's not so steep, it's still, go still going to be taxing. Um, it is still slightly uphill, and if it's raised hard enough, I think 
there's not going to be too many riders left. Quite a few of the riders from the Rock Salt attacker team at the back of the peloton, including number 82. That's Peter Mullins, who was in that initial breakaway. One man who is fairly excited about how this race is unfolding is down amongst it, Pat Shaw. Pat, where do we find you at the moment? I'm about 50 metres in front of our lead rider, Kate Perry, for Specialised Women's Racing. They've really attacked the race, haven't they? Uh, being involved in everything. Karen Heather getting involved in the first intermediate sprint. We saw Matilda Reynolds make a bit of a surge as well. And guess what? My rider today, my surprise bag, it's from them as well. Jamie Gunning, I think she can get them done on a climb like today. They've just started at the bottom of the climb. Pat, what are your expectations for the yellow jersey wearer, yesterday's stage winner, Alina Sierra? Well, yesterday, and we know she doesn't speak much at all uh, in English, but she uh, was translating yesterday and she said, you know what, the yellow jersey loves Australia, and we asked her yesterday whether she feels like Australia is a bit of a home away from home they're at the bottom of falls creek 30 kilometers to go to the finish line we're also joined by jessica allen one of the members of the mitchelton scott team who unfortunately rochelle is not racing at the moment after a nasty crash on saturday in the deakin university kid 11's great ocean road race jess this is kate perry off the front pat shaw mentioned one of her teammates what are your expectations from Jamie Gunning today? I'd love to see Jamie Gunning have a crack today. Um, and not just Jamie Gunning, but a few of the riders, and particularly the ones that lost some time yesterday. Um, it's their responsibility to make back that time. So it'd be great if they could light it up a bit earlier, put Lucy under pressure, and also our whole team. We do only have four riders in Mitchelton Scott, so if they can put the pressure on earlier, um, it might make it a bit harder for Lucy out there. Rochelle, the yellow bike in the middle, number 113, that's Anya Lowe. She's one of the uh, young Tasmanians in the race from the ARA Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team. She's more renowned as a track cyclist. This is a great learning experience for her. Yeah, I think for a lot of the uh, domestic Australian riders, this is they're just going to thrive on being around some of the European teams and riders, and even just hearing the other languages in the peloton can just make you have that feel that you're at you're in a world class peloton here, and I think it will lift uh, the level of a lot of riders as well. So it's a good good race for these riders to be in and get some judgment of where they're at and how hard the racing in Europe actually will be as we go back to Kate Perry now, just getting some food on board. I wouldn't be surprised if she actually holds them off for quite quite some time. She's I mean, a good time trialist as well. Yeah, super, super strong rider. And uh, as we said, maybe a name that some of the European riders don't know. But uh, I'd love to see the peloton actually just get fireworks going at the bottom so it all splits up. And uh, we might see that because some of the riders that are really good climbers have lost a little bit of time yesterday. So they have to try something, not just follow the likes of Mitchell and Scott and Lucy Kennedy. Pat Shaw's out in one of those vehicles on the road. He's put the stopwatch on. 26 seconds is her advantage. It's not a huge amount, given there's so much climbing still to go, and she's all on her own, Jess. Yeah, it's always rough uh, being the lone lamb out there, is what we say. But um, the good thing about this climb is it's not 30 k's all uphill. It does flatten out a little bit and gets undulating after about four or five kilometres. They're my um, favourite bits. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> have a breather, have a gel, and I reckon, yeah... Uh, Kate should be able to just hold them off there and once it really kicks up with 13 kilometers to go I think that's where we're really going to see some fireworks. It's just really ridden like a one-day race now because there's no more racing tomorrow. Rochelle we've seen Kate already have a gel. It is inside the last 30 kilometers but it's all uphill. This will be a one hour 15 minute effort thereabouts. It's important to keep on eating. Huge effort and we can see that she's not uh, anywhere near the smallest gear that she's got on a bike there so still quite strong. It's uh, when the climb gets further up that it gets a little bit steeper and she'll be having to use those smaller gears if she can manage to hold off the peloton but uh, she's been looking over her shoulder a lot too before she hit the climb but now she's just settling into a rhythm. Still a huge group which indicates the pace isn't really on yet. Yeah. With a climb this long, some riders can be a bit scared as to when they should spend all their bickies. Um, but I think soon we should see some fireworks. Um, definitely for our team, we don't want it to be too easy. Uh, someone like Lucy and the pure climbers, they're going to want a harder climb. Um, 
so we should see see it light up soon. That was a, a question I was about to ask you, Jess, was about Lucy Kennedy. She really does have to kind of make this harder self or with her team right from the start, doesn't she? The longer she goes in the peloton, I guess, uh, the more risky it gets for her. Absolutely. The longer and easier it is like this, um, the more chances you're going to have the riders like Ciara and, and the riders that aren't pure climbers staying there to the end. Uh, so for Lucy, the harder the better. But it is still a long way to go. Um, but, yeah, they'll be monitoring that. But, yeah, she's not winning the tour at the moment, so she needs to take it to the tour as well. Pat Shaw keeps delivering the updates. The gap now is 39 seconds. So she continues to extend her advantage. Kate Perry yesterday, though, she lost a significant chunk of time. She was caught in the third group on the road, and she came in at 4 minutes and 33 seconds down. So she's no threat to the yellow jersey. She's no threat to any of the favourites to win this race overall. So really, back in that main peloton, the potential winners of this race overall, they're not worried about Kate Perry. Yeah, absolutely. They'd probably even be happy if she gets a few minutes up the road, even take the stage win. Um, but they're just mainly concerned about themselves at the moment. Well, interestingly, Kate Perry, as we said before, she's been looking over her shoulder quite a bit, but she is wearing a race radio, so it may not be working. She may not have communication with the vehicle, which would be quite frustrating. She'll be getting time checks as well, but, uh, you know, looking over her shoulder, I guess that won't continue if it goes out to over 40 seconds. She's just been hovering around there now, trying to establish that gap. She looks like she's got a very good um, composure there. She's settled in. She has. She is a fantastic individual time trialist. And I always interpret that continue looking over the shoulder as legs are sore and I'd like some company. Absolutely. I think for Kate at the moment, she really just needs to focus on herself and no one else. Um, what I normally do if I'm out there by myself is just deep breaths and just find a nice rhythm, a nice cadence. It's going to be a long hour up this hill, so she can just find a nice rhythm um, and just settle into that. Just saw Chloe Moran just at the back there for the Quartermanta Australian team. Struggling a little bit, but we know she's a more of a fast rider, a fast finisher. Would like the flat roads, but uh, this climb's probably going to be a little bit too much for Chloe Moran. Not really her style of racing. This is Falls Creek. This is the destination. Have you done much training up here, Jess? Just a little bit. We had a uh, team camp here a few years ago, um, and we don't normally always stay in Bright. And Bright's a good location because you can go out, you can do climbs like Falls, Hotham, Tawonga, Buffalo. There's so many variations out here. It's a really beautiful part of Victoria. And from Bright, the ride to the top of Falls Creek and back, I can tell you, is 126 kilometres. <laughs> and a lot of it is uphill. You go over to Twonga Gap, down into Mount Beauty, up Falls Creek, back down, over to Wonga Gap again. And then that avenue of trees into Bright is oh so welcome. Oh, it sure is. I think the hardest climb out here, though, is Mount Hotham. Uh, they do that in the Tour of Bright in December. Awful. Oh, absolutely brutal. I've seen a lot of people walk up that climb. Spirits have been broken on the <laughs> Meg. That left-hand turn, you yeah. see the Meg. It is heartbreaking. Not hate, heartbreaking for Kate Perry. She won the Tour of Bright when it finished at the top of Mount Hotham, so she knows these roads well. On Falls Creek, 26.9 kilometres remaining. We keep getting the updates from Pat Shaw, and the latest time check, according to Pat, is 43 seconds. So she continues to build her advantage. Yeah, she's looking quite strong out there. She's... Uh, really pushing a good solid gear so she's keeping the pace really high well this is falls creek this is near the top of the climb you can still see some of the effects of the bushfires that were here in 2009 one of the people that has been a medalist at the australian road championships he was a bronze medalist a few years ago is neil van der Ploeg. his parents live at the bottom of the climb and this is the area where neil grew up so neil has taken us on a journey up falls creek to tell us the key moments and how difficult it is. Hello, my name's Neil Vanderplug, and I'm gonna take you on a guided tour on the decisive finish of the second stage of this year's Jayco Herald Sun Tour. The climb starts in Mount Beauty right here and finishes at the top of Falls Creek. I was actually born in this building just behind us, the Mount Beauty Hospital, which is only 30 meters away from the roundabout, which marks the start of this decisive climb. I've spent my entire youth going up and down as a cross-country skier and more recently as a professional cyclist. Let's get into it and have a look at this decisive climb. So the riders will have done about 87 kilometres at this point and this is the roundabout that's at the bottom of this iconic climb. 
So we're just in the first kilometre here of the climb, just making our way out of the town. We've got the famous Big Hill mountain bike park to our right. Many national championships have been held there. So you can think about this Falls Creek climb as having two distinct halves. You've got 15k from Mount Beauty to Bogon Village, then from Bogon and I think up until Bogon Village, it's not as steep. It's actually got a few descents in there. So it'll be very strategic among the teams. The second half, however, it's not super steep. It'll still only be averaging four or five percent, but it'll get steeper towards the top. That's where the action's gonna go down in the last part of the second half. But this first half, it's gonna be all about strategy and what the teams do, how they're going to play it. I'm looking forward to it. It's full of bends. It's a real mountain road, just constantly winding up the valley the entire time. Not hardly a straight piece of road ever. Got some mountain bikers. In this first half in particular, they'll be going faster than 30k an hour, which is why it's going to get so strategic. Teams will be not wanting to send their key protected riders. They don't want to get them unleashed so early on. So this is why it's going to get so strategic in the first half. Here we have the famous Cranky Charlie corner, about 4k in. And now we've got our first slightly descending parts up to Bogong Village. So this gives you a bit of an idea of what happens in the first half. So as you can see, the speeds actually get pretty fast in some sections here. So you don't want to be pushing the wind if you're trying to win the stage. Here we are, Bogong Village, and that marks the end of the first half. Now it changes and the climb takes a distinctively different feel. We have no more of those undulations and it becomes just a constant grind. The 15 kilometers getting steeper in the last four. The peloton is now gonna start whittling down and the climbers will come to the fore. So here we are, all yellow lines from here and all climbing, the top of falls. So in the second half, it could be a smaller peloton, or at least one that's getting smaller and smaller by the kilometre. As we've said, it's a constant climb all the way to the top. Don't be surprised if it's still relatively large in the earlier slopes, but it will just whittle down and down. And then in that last 4K, that's when the attacks will come. This is the Falls Creek ticket box. 4Ks to the finish, and it gets steep at around 6%. This is going to be the section where the climbers with legs will go for the stage in that yellow jersey. Here we are, Falls Creek Village. We're just under one kilometre to go here. The finish line's just up in the village. So by now, the riders will have pretty much nothing left in their legs, completely emptying the tank and giving it absolutely everything to the line. This is a decisive stage where GC will be largely determined. In the final few metres here of this gruelling climb up to Falls Creek, we're right up in the village. You can see the ski slopes behind us. It's gonna be a lot of people out here on the day. What a cracking finish it's gonna be. So there you have it. The finish of the second stage of the Jayco Herald Sun Tour. Brutal climb to finish up with here in Falls Creek. We have another mountaintop finish in this year's tour in two days time, finishing at Mount Buller. I'm gonna show you exactly what that one's all about. Woohoo! Here we go, the summit. Neil Vanderplug there with a the home ground advantage. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Rochelle Gilmore and Jessica Allen. And he nailed it in terms of his description as to what would happen in the men's race. Yeah, absolutely, it was spot on and uh, so much can change in that last three kilometres, can't it? You think, okay, you got the most of the climb behind you, but that's where it's all going to happen. I think we're going to see a similar pattern in the women's race. It will be just a gradual elimination from the back. I think so too. I think people will just slowly be getting eliminated as the climb goes on, and then the last 
four to six kilometres, I think it's really going to light up. In the men's race, it was still quite a big group at 10 kilometres to go. Then by the end, there was only three guys that were in it. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we're going to see when it kicks up and the legs get a little bit tired of all those riders, we'll see a lot of them just crack and drop off and the stronger riders come to the fore. And, you know, a name that I'm interested in seeing is Justine Burrow, how she goes, because that was a surprise name at the national championships. And uh, she certainly got some, some endurance about her, strength endurance. So I think this kind of climb might really suit her. Yeah, she's got plenty of strength. We'll find out soon enough. At the moment, they're around about the 20 kilometre to go mark, which is one of the black spots in terms of coverage on this climb. We were confronted with the same challenges in terms of the men's race. The key thing to remember is that in the men's race, we caught all the action in the final 10 to 12 kilometres. The race so far, they got underway at the bottom. It took off from Mount Beauty. The start was delayed ever so slightly because the race went down in cars. They got themselves organised. Once they did roll out, it didn't take too long for the first attacks to get going because the first of the intermediate sprints, that happened after just two kilometres. Toulay Stage 2 for the Lexus of Blackburn, Herald Sun Tour. The leader's jersey today, for now at least, on the shoulders of Alina Sierra of the Astana team, the winner of yesterday's stage. At the first of the intermediate sprints, it was Peter Mullins who had her nose in front, but then it was uh, Ali Wollaston who managed to get over the top to take the maximum points it was Mullins in second position and then it was Chesina in third place from the LABTC team. After that, there was a small group of seven riders who opened up a slight advantage, but it didn't take too long before they were reeled back in. We then saw a fall within the main peloton. One of the riders from the Astana team, Pataro, went down. So too did the young Queenslander, Sewell of Corda Menta Real Estate. Both riders have managed to pick themselves back up. We cross our fingers and hope they're not too seriously injured. Number 65, that was Francesca Sewell. She's the youngest rider in the race. And she performed reasonably well yesterday. This is a great learning experience for her. And a few at the back, a near miss. Pitaro, the most seriously injured. Her team, they've had a successful stint in Australia so far. They rode well across at the Tour Down Under. And they finished in second place at the Kid Elevens Great Ocean Road Race. Kate Perry then broke away on her own in the colours of the Specialised Women's Racing Squad. She headed back into Mount Beauty to pick up the points at the second of the Bright Brewery points classification sprints. She went across the line in first position. Next best was Ruby Roseman Gannon. And then once again, it was Anastasia Tresina of the LABTC team in third position, picking up more points in the race for the green jersey. Kate Perry still leads the race. The latest time check that we've had courtesy of Pat Shaw, has her out at an advantage of 53 seconds. The white jersey for Visit Victoria, best young rider classification. That was the winner of the bunt sprint for second place at the intermediate sprint, Ruby Roseman Gannon, who has been riding so impressively this season. It's been a big step forward. The latest time check for Kate Perry, still off the front on her own, is 40 seconds. Ahead of the peloton that has been piloted, for now at least, by Mitchelton Scott, the team of Jessica Allen, who has joined us in commentary. This is a look at the start of the climb, and Rochelle, you know it's a serious climb when it says QOM start, 30 kilometres. 30 kilometres from the finish, yeah. That would be a bit daunting for a few of the riders, I think, to see that QOM sign so early from the top. But as Jess Allen has told us here, that the climb actually does have some flat spots and a little bit of um, reprieve in moments. And this is uh, Kate Perry, when we saw her just establishing that break and getting into a rhythm. Holds a handy lead now, but it's uh, it's not going to be too long before that gap starts coming down. Importantly, at the bottom of the climb, we saw Kate Perry having a gel, a carbohydrate gel. You have to stay on top. It's an old cliche in cycling. If you're hungry or you're thirsty, it's too late. We've then seen a few of the riders start to slowly get distanced at the back. There's number 81 who you've spoken about, Rochelle. That is Justine Barrow. She doesn't like that fight for position. But gee, we know she's strong. We know she's strong. And I mean, we were talking about her form a little bit yesterday, her um, composure on the bike. She always rides a really big gear, so it looks like she's nearly done and the legs are tired, but she just keeps on going and going. So we'll probably see when it splits up a little bit that she should be in the selection of the best riders. As we go back to Kate Perry, looking very solid on the bike as well. See how long she can hold this uh, nice cadence. And Some early Queen of the Mountains points as well for Kate Perry. And that is towards the Bogon Village. 
Also up towards the front, looked like Peter Mullins getting involved once again. Erica Clevinger in the Tipco colours, off to the left in the blue. Looks as if she's just about to get distanced from that main peloton. This is Falls Creek. We do apologise for the little bit of pitcher breakup that we are suffering from at the moment. They're riding through one of the black spots down near the bottom of Falls Creek. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Rochelle Gilmore and Jessica Allen. This is Toulay Stage 2 for the Lexus of Blackburn at Herald Sun Tour. And for your team, Jessica, as the Mitchelton Scott team, Australia's number one team, this is a pretty important race that comes with a fair bit of pressure. Absolutely. Um, and coming in as defending champions with Lucy Kennedy as well, uh, we do really want to win this race. Uh, we've been staying at the Mitchelton Winery all week, nice which spot. is our main sponsor. Beautiful spot. Uh, so we've been very lucky to be there and we really want to do a good job for all our Australian sponsors this week. Let's take a look at the course once again for Stage 2. The original plan was for it to be 75 kilometres, starting at the top of Falls Creek and racing down. That got cancelled because of the rain. So they jumped into the cars and they went to Mount Beauty. So the race was reduced by 30 kilometres. Then into Twonga South for the first of the intermediate sprints. Back into Mount Beauty for the second intermediate sprint. And then through the opening QOM point before the final ascent through to the finished line at the top of Falls Creek. This, Jessica, is one of the biggest climbs that you'll confront anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Um, for women's racing, it's not often we do finish on a 30 kilometre climb. We do see climbs like this in the Giro d'Italia. We finished on the Zonkalan two years ago. Um, yeah, which was super hard. But in Australia, this is a really, really tough climb, uh, particularly for the NRS riders. But for the World Tour riders and the pure climbers, they're licking their lips, I think. Uh, given how difficult this climb is, Rochelle, can it be tactical or is it just a battle of pure strength? I think it can it can be tactical. I'm hoping that it'll be a pure strength so we can see who is the best of the best today. But uh, if they leave it too long, like we said, for the likes of Lucy Kennedy, if they do leave it too long to actually... That's a tactical error. If uh, they were to leave it too long, some of the uh, riders who are not pure climbers would be able to just maybe hang on until the finish and dig really deep. So it can be tactical if they don't really race it hard from the bottom. Yesterday's stage, that was tactical. It was a fight for positions, particularly coming into that last corner as the peloton still makes their way through one of the dead spots on this climb of Falls Creek in terms of our coverage. Let's take a look back at the opening stage of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour, which started and finished in Shepparton. ARA with Michael Freeberg won't be intimidated by the World Tour teams. He knows he can mix it with them. The pink colours of EF, Education First. It's Jonas Rush, the big figure that's coming towards the front. Meanwhile, at the back, it is a simple case of survival. 1-2-1, one, one. Jesse Coyle, big day out. Well done, Jesse. He spent the whole stage in the breakaway. Yeah, it's easy, easy enough to sit on the back now. You can follow, but trying to move up, trying to go to the front, you've really got to be at your maximum effort. Even though they've got the whole road, it's a real washing machine effect. And look, no one's got complete control here. Look at that. Small technical error. That was the men's race, which was taken out by Alberto Danese. Before we get to take a look at the women's race, yesterday the win by a guy who's in his first year in the pro peloton. What a great start. Yeah, Sun Weber having a really great season this year. Um, and to back it up today with Jai Hindley winning at Falls Creek. They're going, what, what's happening in Western Australia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a good breed of cyclists. And I've known Jai and little Robbie Power and Michael Storer, Durbo, the Myers. We've all come through the same club together. Um, and it's super special to all be racing at an elite level together now and, and seeing those boys do so well. It's impressive. Let's now take a look at the final three kilometres of it. yesterday's stage in a moment. In yesterday's stage, it was a battle amongst the women for positions after the split, and I wasn't sure for a while whether that second group would get back. Yeah, it looked like they were so close at one point, but it was coming closer to the finish, so that's when the uh, speed of the front riders really picks up. So it would have been painfully close for a lot of those riders. They're probably thinking, oh, we should have just put a little bit more effort in earlier to close that down. But, uh, yeah, really frustrating for a couple of the good climbers too that missed that front group yesterday. Lost a little bit of time, but makes today a little bit more interesting as well. Yeah, I imagine your team would have been pretty happy to see a few of the riders in that second group like Sarah Gigante. Yeah, absolutely. And the girls did a super job yesterday, particularly Sarah Roy, her first um, race since her iliac artery surgery. And, Incredible. And she was so strong out there. She really held that front group away from the second group and um, it's really great to have her back. She did a huge job and that would be a great confidence booster for her, Rochelle, as Jessica mentioned after that surgery. First race back, 
causing trouble. Yeah, I think huge confidence booster because when you're away and you're doing the rehab and you're going through all the, you know, the training and you're not racing, you've got nothing to measure yourself on but your own ability. So I think it would have been great for Sarah yesterday and I expected that from her. I know she was excited to get the call up, the late call up and she'll never let the team down and she did a fantastic job. She was outstanding. She's doing the job at the moment towards the front of the peloton as they continue to chase the breakaway of Kate Perry. Still plenty to come on Tourlay Stage 2 of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'd be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune to ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Falls Creek, it has been elevated to cycling fame with the front of Falls Climb being one of the most iconic climbs in the high country. But for those of you seeking a slightly tougher challenge, the back of Falls Creek is considered one of the most difficult in Australia, particularly that first left-hand turn as you get onto the climb. If you don't have enough horsepower, perhaps jump onto the top of a horse and journey around the top of the mountain or grab a mountain bike and go all the way to the very top at around about 1,800 metres in altitude. It's a beautiful place to have a ride. Rochelle, it's a tough place for a sprinter, as you were, for a bike race. Yeah, super tough uh, terrain here, but I'm pretty inspired to get a group together from Sydney and come down here and do some of these mountain bike trails. It looks like it's super fun. I'd also be interested to see, someone will tell us, who has the Strava record for that really hard climb on the back of um, Falls Creek here? And um, I might even get out there and have a go myself. I won't be anywhere in any of those times or anything like that, but uh, just because it's so challenging, I'd like to get out there and have a go at it. I'm sure you both remember the awesome force on the rowing team. Yeah. So they did a lot of their training camps here as well, and they used to ride the back part, which is the harder of the two climbs, up to Falls Creek. And when one of the original members retired, they took a whole bunch of guys out there that were on the brink of making the team, and they said, oh, let's go for a bike ride and see who gets up here. Drew Ginn emerged well ahead of everybody else, and he was the one who ended up in the boat and part of the awesome foursome. Yeah. And this was the foundation. Well, those, those are the awesome foursome. They're known to be some of the hardest athletes in the world, and they can dig so deep and hurt themselves. I've seen them out on cycling rides, and they turn themselves inside out, fall off the bike. I've been in a world of pain afterwards, but yeah. they absolutely love a challenge. But uh, so do I. So I'm looking forward to coming and uh, experiencing some of these mountain bike trails down here at Falls Creek, or should I say up here at 1,780 metres. I play a little bit of test with James Tompkins from the Awesome Force. I'm talking to challenges. He likes to challenge the calls as well. Luckily, we play an Ontica and we can see whether the ball was in or out. Just had an update from Pat Shaw. Kate Perry has been caught. Well, no big surprise there. Yeah, no, we knew she was going to be caught, but she was looking good. But this means that the Peloton are actually in action already from the bottom, which is what we want to see. And uh, it is uh, the Mitchell and Scott team that are applying the pressure there. Like Jessica said, they want to make it as hard as possible for as long as possible just to be sure that uh, the strength... These are live pitches. That was Jessica Pratt in the Australian Colours of Quarter Mentha. She's been dropped. It's a significantly reduced group, but... Jessica Allen, the yellow jersey, Alina Sierra, she's still there right behind your team leader, Lucy Kennedy. Absolutely. So this is our main concern, I think, is actually Sierra. Um, we were told, you know, we do have to make this race hard. Lucy does need this climb to be hard, otherwise she's going to make it to the finish with her. So you can see there on the front now, it's uh, Jessica Roberts, our new signing from Manchester. And she's doing a great job splitting the peloton. 
There's maybe only, what, 15, 15 riders left? Yeah, and she's not known as a climber, is she? So she's doing a fantastic no, job. she's doing a super job for She's the team. super fast, that's for sure. But uh, Jessica Roberts, that's a name that we'll be looking out for in the future because she's now in a world team and she is doing the job that she's probably not had to do very much in her uh, young career. But uh, it's a great way to develop a rider and to have a lead rider like Lucy Kennedy that you're confident in. Jessica Roberts, fifth on the stage yesterday in the sprint finish, recruited as part of the sprint train, and she is decimating the peloton. This is incredible. I haven't actually seen Jess race that much, so it's, it's really great to see her doing such a good job on this climb, and uh, it's really positive going into Europe next week as well uh, with a lot of the hillier races, so she's going to be a great, great force to have on the team. Are you a little bit concerned about the fact that Lucy just has the one teammate there with her? Yeah, but I think Lucy's more than capable of of uh, looking after herself on this climb. Lucy's not only one of the best climbers in Australia, but one of the best climbers in the world. Um, and the climb gets harder and harder towards the top. And I think, yeah, the last six, four, six Ks, you're really going to see her fire it up. Jamie Gunning still in the group, Rochelle? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what names have actually made that little group. But we saw Lauren Stevens for Team Tipco on the back, so she's still there. As we've said, Elena Sierra is going to be the biggest trouble. That's the ride in the yellow jersey yesterday's stage winner just sitting behind Lucy Kennedy she knows that's the wheel that she has to stick to if she's going to make it to Roberts now swings off so Lucy Kennedy finds herself completely isolated yeah and Lucy Kennedy just uh, getting rid of one bottle as well so we're getting already into the business and it's 15 kilometers ago it's still a very long way Sarah Gigante now attacks yeah this is fantastic I really do want to see Sarah Gigante and the likes of Jamie Gunning as well having a crack and trying to isolate Lucy I think that's going to be the best card for the next on through the Bogon village so that's the last of the little descents from here Rochelle to the finish line it's all uphill yeah, great move by Sarah Gigante, just testing the legs there. The uh, small group, they're able to respond though, so she's just settling back in and may need to wait until some more legs are fatiguing. Justine Barrow is on the right-hand side of the screen in the Rock Salt Attacker colours and the white jersey for the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification, Ruby Roseman Gannon, is still in contact and she's one of the best sprinters in the race. Yeah, that's interesting. I wouldn't have expected her to be in such a select small group, but uh, Rock Salt attacker now. This is the next move. Emily Herfoss trying to go off the fronts. The winner last year of the National Road Series, and Herfoss is opening up a nice little lead. Or is it Herfoss? This could be Bree Wilson. It's Bree Wilson, in fact, who goes off the front. They've got a really similar style, same haircut, a check over the shoulder. Bree Wilson it is who's going forward. This is a good strategic move for the team because they've still got other riders in that main peloton. Well, we've certainly seen a great race from the Rock Salt Packer team. They have been very active in yesterday's stage. We saw them all grouping down the back before they hit the climb, but uh, they've still got a few riders there and some cards to play. So fantastic move there from Bree Wilson. It's such a strong team. As a National Road Series team, you must be impressed. Oh, super impressed. They have riders that can win on basically any stage of any tour. Um, you've got Peter Mullen. She's all class, really knows how to re le lead a race um, and also captain a race. And, yeah, I'm not surprised these girls are attacking. I think that's what they need to do. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see Emily Hefros also attacking if this gets brought back. And we saw on Saturday at the Kid Eleven's Great Ocean Road Race, Madeline Wright was in the day-long breakaway, and she was one of the great animators. They're a team, Rochelle, that if they can't win the race, they at least have a big impact on the race. Yeah, they certainly do. They'll all, always be a part of the racing. So they are a team that just goes on the attack, and they want to really make the race and be a part of it. Sometimes that will backfire. But uh, I think today, uh, to, to be, have these numbers this far into a small group, I think it's a, a great race. And most of their team, they wanted to race down Falls Creek, with the exception of Justine Barrow. But she's, let's say, slightly more experienced in life. She's 40 years of age. She's a full-time physiotherapist. She didn't want to take those risks. No, she's come into the sport a bit later, like Lucy Kennedy as well. Lucy's improved her descending skills a lot more. But, yeah, for a team that is so tactically strong and skillfully strong as well, I think it would have been nice to see what impact they would have had on the descent. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately we didn't get that today. Who chases now? Well, I think it's just, like we said, it will be a race of attrition. I'm sure, sure that Lucy Kennedy will be keen to keep the pace pretty high and uh, she might not like that stop-start type attacking, so it might be more of a diesel type of ride where she just squeezes the pedals a little bit more and uh, picks up the pace to try and keep these uh, breakaway and attacks 
in check. So we're back with the uh, small group now. This is at the uh, back of the group. Bree Wilson still out in front on her own. And yesterday, the second group on the road, yellow jersey in the general classification. There's one Astana rider still at the front to be able to ride there in support of Alina Sierra. So that's at least good news for the yellow jersey. It's not such bad news for Lucy Kennedy, your teammate either, Jessica. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, the other three riders we have on Mitchell and Scott, they're not pure climbers, and we knew that coming into the stage. But we also know that Lucy's strong enough to, to hold her own ground, and she's also a very smart bike rider, and I think, yeah, you'll see her play her card a bit later on in the climb. 22 seconds is the advantage for Bree Wilson, and Rochelle, she's got a fantastic rhythm. Yeah, she did um, establish that gap pretty quickly. It was a pretty aggressive attack, so now she'll just have to get into her rhythm, and we can see that that's happening now. She was shifting gears a little bit there, just to look over the shoulder, but she looks like she's uh, still pedalling quite well, so we'll see how far she can go. Pedaling Picking well. up the pace, yeah, she she's is really... The, she's on the big chain ring. <laughs> she's got a beautiful pedalling style, actually. I really like her cadence that she's going up this Falls Creek climb in. This is one of her teammates at the back of the group. This looks like Madden right at the back. She's one of two physios on the team. So if they've got any injury problems, the <laughs> riders covered. can take care of themselves. They're one of the best represented teams in this group. Jessica Pratt has returned. She's the rider in the white colours for the quarter Mentha team. So the tempo's backed off ever so slightly for Jess to get back to that group. Yeah, Jess is a very strong rider, a really gutsy rider as well, so I'm not surprised she's back on the group yep. there. And she'll just keep fighting and holding on as long as she can. Let's get back down to Pat Shaw. Pat, you're in the car in front of Bree Wilson, and she is moving well. Yeah, she looks really good, and she's very uh, calm in her approach. She's riding within herself at the moment. She's just taken a look over the shoulder a moment ago. She could see the acceleration from the peloton. He was Samara Shepard from the New Zealand national team uh, in 2017, 18 and 19. She was mountain bike national champion in New Zealand and also fifth in the world marathon championship last year. So she's got climbing pedigree. And for Bree Wilson, she's still got a few teammates back in that main group. Do you think this is the attack before the big attack from that team? Well, I can see three riders in there for Rock Salt Attacker. We've got Bree Wilson up the road. Then we've got Herfoss, Mullen and Barrow all in that small group. And that group was uh, really stripped down after that big turn from Sarah Roy. This is an impressive performance. Meanwhile, at the back of the group, number 93, that's Holly Harris. And Rochelle, she went a little bit off-road yesterday. Make a boat. That's the current Australian individual time trial champion. That's Sarah Gigante. Number 21, that's Lauren Stevens. 115, that is...
could be riding herself into a podium position, that's for sure, because there won't be many riders that can match Lucy Kennedy when she really puts the hammer down. There's Lucy off to the left-hand side of the screen. She's just getting herself up out of the saddle. She wears number one. As one of her teammates, Jessica Allen, perhaps you can take us closer to her thoughts at the moment. What do you think she would be thinking? Uh, I don't think she'll be too stressed at the moment. There is only 11 kilometres to go, but it is all uphill, so it's a long 11 kilometres. Um, seeing that she's at the back, I think it's a good thing just for her to just keep calm, assess the situation, see what rider she needs to look at, and um, just really recover so she can pick her move and pick the right spot to use all her energy. At the moment, is this playing into the hands of the yellow jersey, Alina Sierra? It, it is in a way um, that it's a little bit calm, and I think the peloton is just waiting for a move from, from Lucy Kennedy. But um, when Lucy goes to the back, I think it puts more pressure on the Astana team. Um, speaking about her rock salt attacker teammates back in the peloton, I don't think Peter Mullins is actually there. We saw sort of do a lot of work very early. It's 86 there of Madeline Wright. Madeline uh, Wright, Emily Herfoss and Justine Barrow still in this group for rock salt attacker. 
It's Justine Barrow off to the right, right. number 81. Her number 83 is her Foss. 86 is Madeline Wright. I'm impressed with number 61. That is Jessica Pratt for the quarter Mentha Australian national team. She's got a spot on the Canyon Shram team this year, courtesy of the Zwift Academy. She picked up that spot and it was competitive to get that position. Yeah, I think she's uh, really motivated to get over to Europe and uh, really be a part of that Canyon Shram team. And uh, this is her first really big taste of being uh, uh, surrounded by elite riders, uh, world tour, world team riders. So I think we'll see her really rise to a new level. Very, very excited about that uh, Swift Academy position that she's earned herself. And number 115, the white jersey for the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification. That's Ruby Roseman Gannon. And Jessica Allen, she's not showing any signs of being dropped. No, she's looking really good, isn't she? I think all she needs to do at the moment is just doing what she's doing now, sitting towards the back, keeping as much wind as, as possible away from her and just sucking wheels and get dragged as close to the finish as she can. Yeah, the advice would be pretty simple. Keep doing whatever you're doing. That's it. It's working <laughs> really well. Well, this is Elena Sierra, the leader of the tour, yesterday's winner, one teammate left on the front to try and keep the pace as high as possible. Sierra looks quite comfortable so far. May find herself a little bit lost when a teammate's finished. The rider in the white jersey behind her, that is Gutierrez. She's the Mexican national champion. Next in line is Jamie Gunning. She's the current Australian under 23 road champion. She knows this climb like the back of her hand. She's done lots of training camps here. Two riders from New Zealand, Ella Harris, we spoke about Jessica Pratt winning the Zwift Academy. Ella Harris won it the year before she rides for the New Zealand national team here. She's number 71. There's number one, the defending champion, Lucy Kennedy. She'd dearly love a teammate. It'd be handy, Rochelle, if she had Jessica Allen with her. Sure would be, but let's oh, not I make Jessica. I don't think Jeff I'd be there, to be honest, at the moment. <laughs> oh, you never know when you're in the role of a domestic. There's a move going off the front. There's been a big attack, and it has been launched. And that looks like it is Tresina who's gone off the front from the LA BTC team. It is the Russian who's renowned as being super aggressive. And Jessica Allen, she showed really good form at the Tour Down Under. She sure did. And that was such an explosive attack she just did then. And no reaction at all from the peloton. So I think it's great they've had a crack there. And if she can bridge across debris, that's going to be a pretty dangerous move, I think. Well, what are your expectations here from the rest of that group, Rochelle? Well, I don't think they're, they're going... Well, they couldn't respond to it. It was so powerful. That's the way that you want to attack if you want to go solo. And I think she will come across. Probably that, that um, Brie Wilson's getting the message now that there is one rider on the way across. Not that it'll change her tempo or anything like that, but she will be looking forward to some company. It may even just give her that little bit more of, you know, motivation to keep going because I'm going to have company soon. We can share the work. Um, and here is number 13, Chesina. She was good yesterday. She finished in seventh position in terms of the race for the coveted yellow jersey. She's just nine seconds behind. So she's a real threat to the general classification. So she started with a 50-second buffer on Brie Wilson. She doesn't have to catch Brie Wilson to still potentially win the race overall. Yeah, this move's going to put a lot of a lot of pressure on the GC riders. So I think with only 8.7 k's to go, we're going to see some responding from the peloton. And I'm expecting a move to come from your teammate, Lucy Kennedy. Looking forward to seeing whether there is a reaction coming from the peloton, because this is the kind of early attack that Lucy can take advantage of to try and bridge across to. Our camera is panning back. It's in anticipation, and Kennedy pops into the picture. And she has torn the race to pieces. They're trying to respond. The yellow jersey has been distanced. Yesterday's stage winner, Alina Sierra. She is yet to go through the picture. There's the white jersey. Did you see yellow at the front? Was yeah. she responding? She I, was there. I think she was, to be honest. I think she might have been. We'll uh, get another picture on that, but uh, just fighting to hold the wheel. We'll get another picture in the moment, but uh, this is Bree Wilson. She's followed by Chasina, who's been joined by Lucy Kennedy and three other riders. And the big question is, is the yellow jersey there? The race is on. It is. And this last 8K is going to be super exciting. You can see how much that front bunch just split in one attack then. And the advantage now for our race leader on the road, at least, Bree Wilson, will be tumbling. She's going down through the gears. She knows that the reaction is coming from behind. She has to somehow find something. And this climb's just going to get hard. Okay. Okay. Going to see the time. 
and bow down significantly. Yeah, you can see in the uh, the breathing there and the facial expressions that it is really getting tough. And 8.2 kilometres is still a very, very long way to go. That is a really long way. The last time check that we had was 1 minute and 15 seconds. But since then, we've seen a couple of attacks coming from that main peloton, including last year's overall race winner, Lucy Kennedy. There is... Up in the distance is Kennedy. This is the group that contains the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider. This is Ruby Roseman Gannon. Just in front of her in the white colours of Quarter Mentha, that is Jessica Pratt. This is a group now that is simply trying to limit the damage. Holly Harris is also in this group. She's number 93. Lauren Stevens is the rider in the blue and yellow, number 21 for the Tipco team. The two Kiwis are in this group as well. That is Ella Harris and Shamara Shepard. Samara Shepard was expected to be a dark horse threat today. Yeah, Samara was in one of those early breakaways as well, so maybe that's impacted her legs a little bit now. Um, I am surprised she's in the second group, but they're just crawling their way back to the front group now. And not seeing the yellow jersey in that group, I think you might have been right, Michelle. She could well have had the legs to respond to Lucy Kennedy. Yeah, it certainly would have hurt, but um, she doesn't mind the strong accelerations. It's just the uh, the time under, under pressure, I think, that really will get to her but uh, as Jessica Allen's been telling us there is a few little sections where you can get moments of not rest but uh, less power going through the pedals and uh, she can sit a wheel very well so if she if she can get those moments of rest it's only a, like a few seconds that a sprinter needs and then they'll give them another few minutes so um, back with the race leader at the moment it hasn't been caught yet so she still looks good she still looks good she's not slowing down but the problem is the others are speeding up. And I've just got another text message from Pat Shaw. 50 seconds. Yeah, I don't think the peloton's going to slow down now. I think they're going to get faster and there's going to be more attacks. This is the group that contains Lucy Kennedy. That's Chesina. And there is the yellow jersey. So Alina Sierra has been able to respond. Sarah Gigante sits in second position. And importantly for Alina Sierra, she still has Ragusa with her, does she? No, it's not her teammate. Just in front of her is Jamie Gunning. Very similar colours between yeah. Specialised and Astana. But the yellow jersey is isolated. She's on her own. Yeah. So she's still there and she has been in and out of the seat a lot. So that might be a sign of struggling and just hoping that it settles down a little bit. But uh, I think if Lucy Kennedy has anything to say about it, it's going to just get ramped up and ramped up. She Absolutely. needs to keep the pressure on. She really does. For Lucy, the harder the climb, the better. Um, and with six k's to go, it does get harder and steeper. So I think she's going to take that to her full advantage and try to rip the legs off the sprinters. <laughs> and the tactic now for Alina Sierra, it's a simple one tactically. It's a difficult one physically. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Yep. <laughs> and do it as much as you possibly can. And she will for as long as she can. But, you know, it's just going to be, we're going to see her there. And then a second later, it's all over. So there's no coming back for sprinters once you, you dropped. Uh, there's no fighting your way back. So she'll just hold on for as long as she possibly can. She has to be prepared to go into the red zone. Oh, she'll go into the red zone, yeah. She's probably there already, to be honest. <laughs> she's been and she's had a dance with the red zone and she's still going. She's got to be prepared to boogie all the way to the top of Falls Creek. That's this it. This is going to be a thrilling last five kilometres. It's still Bree Wilson who leads. This is Tourlay Stage 2 for the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Lucy Kennedy, she won this race last year. It was a tough final climb last year, but nowhere near as difficult as this one. One. The leader on the road in terms of the stage is Brie Wilson. Here she is now for the Rock Salt Attacker team. Brie yesterday, she was in the second group on the road, so she starts today 59 seconds behind the leader's jersey. At one point, she was out to an advantage of a minute and 22 seconds. So for a little while, she was the virtual race leader. That's not the case anymore. She's slowly getting it reeled back in. You can see... Jessica, those shoulders are starting to rock and roll. You can't help but feel for it. Yeah, I mean, it's a 30-kilometre climb, Matt, and it's only getting harder from here. And she's had a super aggressive race. I'd love to see Brie actually get the most aggressive jersey today. She has to, doesn't she? Yes. There will be a protest by just about the entire peloton if she does not get the Quest Shepparton most combative prize. Still got a really smooth rhythm. Her pedaling style is fantastic. It's textbook perfect. Yeah, she still looks very, very good. So, you know, we haven't got a time check at the moment how far they are behind. But uh, it's also a good thing that she won't know how strong that attack really was and how close they came. So the time checks, sometimes it might be better for them to be a little bit delayed. But she's in, uh, 
in the zone at the moment. She's just really focused on this uh, pedaling style and trying to keep the speed as high as possible. So 42 seconds is the gap now. So that's still a, a handy lead. And the, the, uh, the main group have probably just settled a little bit, but it won't be long before there's some more attacks coming out of that group. Let's get back down to Pat Shaw. Pat, where do we find you and how do you see the race? Well, I'm looking right at Yes, with not to the finish line yet. 38 seconds is her gap. She got out as far as a minute 20, and she was spoken about it. And it's a broken grip behind. Number 91, that is the Australian under 23 road champion. That is Jamie Gunning. Number 81, just in front of her, is Justine Barrow, silver medalist from the National Road Championships this year. The yellow jersey, Alina Sierra, she slips down towards the back. Number 23 on the far side is the teenager, the 19 year old, that is Sarah Gigante. Number one last year's winner, I think she's going to the back, Rochelle Gilmore, because she is ready to attack. Yeah, and it's interesting because when she goes to the back, Elena Sierra tries to go back as well. But uh, here goes Lucy Kennedy now. She's seen her move from the front. That is Shepard. That is the Kiwi that's going off the front. Yeah, and she was in the second group, wasn't she? So she's come across Shepard. And it's the one that Jessica Allen was telling us about earlier that she really wanted to watch today, if that is Shepard that's gone off the front. And we can see the gap came down to 40 seconds. Once that little game of cat and mouse started to be played, Bree Wilson, consistent tempo, it's back out to 50 seconds. That's it. When you're off the front like that, you can't worry about what the group behind is doing because there is a lot of cat and mouse. And it actually gives you a bit more advantage just to set your own nice tempo, keep going, and hopefully they'll play enough cat and mouse that you can get away with the sneaky stage win. It's the Kiwis again. This time, it's Ella Harris who attacks. The reaction is coming from one of the teammates of Bree Wilson, and it is Justine Barrow. And at the back, number 54, that is the Mexican national champion, that is Gutierrez. She's suffering, she's rocking and rolling, but she's still holding. She stays in contact. Well, Justine Barrow is one that I said would be interesting. Here goes Lucy Kennedy, attacking off the front, and it's a rider from LA that tries to join her, but uh, a powerful attack from Kennedy. And Kennedy has launched that attack up the inside. Jacina responds. It's then Jamie Gunning. And the Next other in line is Sierra. Then we see Justine Barrow in the drops, sprinting desperately to try and go across. Kennedy doesn't quite have the gap. What's it like for you as a teammate watching this, Jessica Allen? Oh, my legs hurt just watching it. But for a rider like Lucy, she really does have to make this climb hard. She can attack, but you can see it's really strung out. So she can keep the pressure on, maybe have a little rest again, and then there's still 5Ks to go for her to try getaway solo. How good is Alina Sierra as a mountain climber for somebody who's classified as a sprinter? Yeah, she's definitely a sprinter that can climb, but she's a pure sprinter. She can sprint with the absolute best in the world. So her sprinting um, is her real weapon, but she can climb a lot better than most pure sprinters. So um, we did expect to, her to put up a bit of a fight today. She's been able to follow the move of Lucy Kennedy. And uh, this looks like it might be close to the end for Brie Wilson. Fantastic ride. 
She has almost been reeled back in. And Alina Sierra, sprinting is her strength. And her weaknesses are still really strong. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. And she does look quite comfortable. But the key, I think, for uh, for Lucy Kennedy is she has to keep the pressure on. Because even if she just lets it up for a couple of seconds, that's great for Sierra. That's all she needs is every couple of minutes, a two or three second uh, little bit of reprieve and re recovery and then she'll be right to go again so Lucy Kennedy really has to just keep the power down if she wants to drop Sierra. Jessica Allen, job application for you as a sports director in retirement. You're on race radio, you're talking to Lucy Kennedy, what's the instruction? Oh, I wouldn't be getting too stressed at the moment. It is only four and a half K to go but it's all uphill. Um, I think the most important thing is not to panic too much um, and she's really, she knows this climb well. She's researched it. She's going to know when her point is to attack. And I think that's going to be pretty soon. Have you ever had a sports director say, now's a good time to panic? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it happens quite a bit in races. <laughs> Everybody always says, nothing improves by panicking. Everybody stay calm. Now would be a good time to panic. panic. Yeah, sports <laughs> directors actually can get more panicky than the riders, that's for sure, back in the team car. Because you don't feel like you've got any control. control. But when you're the one that's there and doing it, you can, okay, no, I can actually influence the outcome. Yeah. And that helps you stay calm. Yeah. That's so, I mean, it's, it's hard too because you've got six riders in a team and they all respond differently. So some riders might need to hear a little bit of panic to get going and other riders, well, that'll make them switch off a little bit. So it's, it's a very uh, hard job, I think, for a sport director to keep the whole team motivated and to get the best out of them without getting them too panicky. Exactly. But, uh, and also, no one knows a rider better than themselves. So Lucy's going to know herself out there. She knows what she's capable of, and so do all those riders. So the directors can give them guidance, but also you really need to listen to your body and, uh, and know when the best time is to go yourself. Bree Wilson has now been caught. Her teammate, Justine Barrow, is suffering at the back of the group. The yellow jersey, Alina Sierra, is still holding on. That's Bree Wilson at the front followed then by Lucy Kennedy. Sarah Gigante is the next in line, followed by Jamie Gunning. Then the yellow jersey of Sierra. At the back is Chesina and is Justine Barrow contemplating a move. There's a problem for Bree Wilson, a mechanical problem after having spent the whole day out in front. Michelle Gilmore, there is no justice in sport. We, uh, we spoke about riding in the big ring. She was riding in the big ring in the 26th or the 27. I don't know. Let's see now what happens. It was a gear change. You can see with the fingers there. Oh, I dropped chain the chain. Drop. Yeah. Well, a little bit predictable. Well, now the disappointing, tempo. Disappointing for her. And uh, one point I wanted to make, Matt, is um, Justine Burrow. You said she was struggling at the back. Now, I said that to myself for about an hour at the national championships. <laughs> and she didn't get dropped. So the rider at the back, she rides a big gear. She looks like she's in trouble. But she somehow just manages to keep going. And she's, she, I think she might be the, uh, you know, one of the strongest riders there. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Lena Sierra now just trying to get a bit of rhythm. She was under a lot of pressure too just a moment ago. It, Justine Barrow, the rider in the Rock Salt Attacker Color, sitting in second last position. As you can see, the red helmet returning. That is Ramirez. She looks like she's doing a strength endurance effort all the time. And throughout the Road National Championships, the current World Time Trial Champion, Rowan Dennis, sent Robbie McEwen and I a message, mash for cash. <laughs> That's it. Every rider, they all ride to a different cadence and uh, she has come into the sport a bit later and yeah. This Pretty is Bree Wilson. Wilson trying to return. It'd be nice to see her get back. I think she will get back. The, the front group don't seem to be riding too hard and if she can use the convoy there just to get back and that rider in front, Samara, I think she might be able to get there. Now is actually a good time not to panic because if she does she goes into the red zone and then she really blows up exactly she, she does look quite relaxed actually she um with the whole breakaway and making sure she got the nutrition on board and when she dropped the chain there, very relaxed um looks like she has a lot of experience and she's doing a, her best now just in a calm manner to try and get back to those riders um i'm predicting another attack pretty soon from lucy kennedy She's 32 years of age, Bree Wilson, so she does have some experience. And this is a nice move. Justine Barrow going to the front, her teammate, and she's looking over her shoulder. She's probably trying to slow this group down a little bit, but you go too slow, and that entices attacks. Lucy Kennedy 
She's ready to go. Here She's she in goes. the drops. And look at the reaction coming from the yellow jersey. Alina Sierra. It was the sixth sense. She could feel the move coming from Kennedy. And the Cuban is up for the challenge. Jamie Gunning slots in a third position. She also responds. 3.3 kilometres to go, Matt. This is an impressive ride by the sprinter Sierra to be able... And that's the advantage that she has. She has a very, very strong kick, so she can be straight onto the wheel of Lucy Kennedy. And that's why Lucy Kennedy has to have the experience to know that even though she's right there, it's only... A, you know, it can only be seconds between being there and not being there, and she won't come back. So Lucy Kennedy has to just keep throwing out the attacks or putting the pressure down. She's broken, Kennedy. Or oh, has she? She goes to the back. She gets a little moment of respite and she slots onto the back wheel. That is smart riding by Alina Sierra. She lets Sarah Gigante go through. Next in line is Jamie Gunning. The yellow jersey stays in contact. Lucy Kennedy backs off and Alina Sierra says muchas gracias. She yeah. sure does. I think I think Rochelle was spot on there. Lucy has to keep it hard, and I don't think she would have saw Sierra just move to the back with exhaustion then. So I think she needs to keep making it hard and maybe throw in a few more attacks to really, really get rid of her. I think Elena Sierra is going to win this tour. I'll say it now. I don't know if she'll win the stage because Lucy Kennedy is certainly the stronger rider, but uh, I think she's going to come close enough into the finish to win this stage. 2.9 kilometres to go, which is absolutely phenomenal. This is a ride of her career. It is impressive. Ally Harris in the black colours, the Kiwi. And then number 81, mashing for cash, once again, is Justine Barrow. This yeah, is awesome. Another rider I said, Matt, that don't count her out because she's just going to keep coming back. Obviously, in a gear like this, you can't respond to the attacks. There's no way she can respond to a fast attack, but she'll keep clawing her way back. She's a super strong rider. She's old enough to remember when the Coca-Cola Super Yo-Yo team came to school to do a demonstration. Well, just like those yo-yos, she keeps on bouncing back. Kennedy at the front. And in second spot, Sarah Gigante, inside the last three kilometres, has the composure to take on a gel. She's contemplating goes, stage honours. Kennedy stretching again. Barrow is distance. Harris also. But the yellow jersey, Alina Sierra, is still there. Yeah, she's having a fantastic ride, Matt. Lucy's doing all she can. Now with two and a half K to go to get rid of Sierra. I'd also like to see Sarah Gigante and Jamie Gunning have a crack as well. They're two of the best under-23 riders, not just in Australia, but all around the world. Number 23, Sarah Gigante, the 19-year-old. Just behind her is the Australian under-23 road champion, Jamie Gunning, who's in the drops. Rochelle, is she contemplating a move? She may well be. She looks actually the best of uh, the three behind Lucy Kennedy with her pedalling style. She looks very comfortable and... Uh, why not throw out an attack? Because if it's not her, Lucy Kennedy is going to have to keep doing that. And these are the moments here where it just backs off a little bit that saves the likes of Sierra. So I'm wondering what the director's telling Lucy if he if they're saying just keep keep the pressure on or keep the attacks going. I think it's the pressure that's going to hurt Sierra more than the attacks. From this group, the yellow jersey, she was the stage winner yesterday, so she gets a 10-second time bonus. She has a 10-second buffer on Lucy Kennedy and Jamie Gunning. Her advantage over number 23, Sarah Gigante, is 59 seconds because Sarah missed the split yesterday. That is the situation of the race with two kilometres remaining as they make their way towards the Falls Creek Ski Resort. Pace backs off again. And I think the camera is panning out to watch Ella Harris return. I wouldn't be surprised if Ella Harris has a sneaky attack here. Oh, no, just straight back on the wheel. Or a sneaky <laughs> sucking of the oxygen. <laughs> I would like to see one of the youngsters attack, um, particularly Sarah. She has nothing to lose. Uh, being 59 seconds down on GC, this could be a great opportunity for her to have a stage win. Two kilometres remaining. I thought you were about to get your wish as Sarah Gigante rised out of the saddle. First season for her with the American Tipco Silicon Valley Bank team. She's the one squeezed in the middle, wearing number 23. One of the most famous numbers in sport, courtesy of Michael Jordan. And here she is, Justine Barrow. Oh, it's a fair distance, Rochelle. Yeah, no. No, it's not. Well, she's, <laughs> she's back on. It was the angle. The camera wasn't showing them just around the corner. Of course she's back. Brilliant. 
Yeah, sure. she is number 81. And Lucy Kennedy just picking up the pace on the front there. And Elena Sierra is ready for the next attack. That's for sure. She's had a, you know, a good couple of minutes now without pressure on the pedals. And she looks quite comfortable. Well, just like Sarah Gigante, number 81, Justine Barrow, she was in the second group yesterday. So she's 59 seconds behind the yellow jersey of Alina Sierra. For a sprinter, the Cuban makes one impressive climber. Is it times like these, Jess, that you just want to grab the race radio and say, come on, Lucy, yeah. you need to put the pressure down now. You need to make this harder. Look at the size of the gear Justine Barrow was riding. She's just an impressive rider because you, you you just think that this is just not possible because she rides that big gear right from the bottom of every climb. She looks like she's finished, but she just keeps going and going. She looks like she's on the squat machine. I'd like to see how much she squats, actually. It's phenomenal. That is one of the lowest cadences you are ever likely to see. It is extraordinary. It is pure strength. Number 35, speaking of strength, Alina Sierra. Yeah, she's dropping off the wheel as Lucy does. She doesn't want Lucy to have a big run again like that. She's keeping a close eye on her. She knows if she stays alongside her, she'll be able to kick and just play with the mind of Lucy. Here know? she goes again. Lucy Kennedy attacks one more time into the barrow as Sierra responds. They've created a small gap on the others. Sarah Gigante is the next in line. Kennedy, can she force the gap? Alina Sierra is still seated in the slipstream of Lucy Kennedy. This Sierra is, is an having, extraordinary defence. She's having a fantastic ride and with 1.4k to go I think Lucy just has to leave it all out there now. She pins the ears back Lucy Kennedy to see whether she can crack the Cuban. It's not happening. Not yet. 1200 metres to race. Jamie Gunning at the back of the group number 91. Just in front of her is Sarah Gigante. Well, you can see it is a long last kilometre, so a lot can happen. But with every 100 metres that passes, the Cuban Elena Sierra is going to... It's easier for a sprinter the closer you get to the finish. I can't believe we're saying that about a sprinter on a 30-kilometre climb. But At this race, she looks like she's going to win the stage as well because yeah. the speed in which she's reacting to those attacks. Yeah, and I think she'll just be beaming with confidence now. And uh, we're talking about how many jerseys she had yesterday. Well, she's going to have a full suitcase going home. Well, the only jersey she's not going to take home will be the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification. Yeah. Just because she's aged out. <laughs> she's had a phenomenal summer in Australia, as well as last year as well, winning the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Race. And Ella Harris also claws her way back. So she's not out of contention for the stage victory. This has been a solid ride by the Kiwi. Maybe this time just going straight past, yeah? I would love to see that. <laughs> no, she slipped in there. She's just looking for the wheels to get her to the finish. Ella Harris, the Kiwi, she looks across the shoulder to see if Justine Barrow is also returning. Lucy Kennedy continues to set the tempo. The group also contains Jamie Gunning, who wears number 91, and with 23 in her back for Tipco is Sarah Gigante. Five out in front battling it out for Toulay Stage 2 honours in the Lexus of Blackburn, Herald Sun Tour. This has been an enormous defence of the yellow jersey by Alina Sierra. She was expected to win it yesterday. Lucy again, out of, the, out of the saddle, putting the pressure on. She's trying one more time. It has to be an all-or-nothing effort. It is full gas now to the finish line for Lucy Kennedy. There is a 10-second time bonus for the stage victory. Ella Harris, she won't be dropped now. The road of the black colours. She can almost see the finish line. She's finding a little bit extra. Sarah Gigante in third position. She's hunting for the stage victory. Harris moving up onto the wheel of Alina Sierra. 500 metres to go into Falls Creek. Oh, Kennedy has got oh. the gap. Kennedy is, or oh, has she? Perhaps that aerial shot, yeah, she's it got is. The, she's got Kennedy the gap. has created the gap. Finally, it's that pressure across the last kilometre. Lucy Kennedy has created the gap. 
Jamie Gunning, who wears number 91, she is locked together on the same time as Lucy Kennedy. If Jamie Gunning gets across the finish line ahead of Lucy Kennedy, Jamie Gunning will go out the winner of the race. Sarah Gigante, she's hunting for the stage victory. 300 metres to go. Lucy Kennedy, she cannot forget about Jamie Gunning. And here comes Ella Harris. The Kiwi is on her way. Ella Harris is also in contention. She started the day, though, at 59 seconds down. She's not a threat to the overall honours. There's a little bit of a gap. Jamie Gunning has been distanced. This is good for Lucy Kennedy. Ella Harris, Sarah Gigante fighting it out for stage honours. The New Zealander, and there is Gigante. She stays in the slipstream. Harris, she was dropped four times, but she conquers Falls Creek. A heroic effort from Harris. Gigante in second, Kennedy the winner of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Unbelievable how much it can change in 500 metres. And here comes Elena Sierra. She was so close, 500 metres from the finish, that attack from Lucy Kennedy. Oh, what a day. Unbelievable. Rochelle, a 30 kilometre climb. 500 metres to go. The yellow jersey has cracked. Jessica Allen, lesson number one. It's Never no. stop trying. I know. I did not expect that finish, to be honest with you, Matt. I thought Sierra was going to have that in the bag. But good on Lucy Kennedy for still being persistent. And that's, that's Lucy Kennedy for you. You've got to keep trying. And you can see at the end there, she was absolutely spent. But she did what was needed. And, yeah, what a ride strong attack and you can see Elena Sierra did not even respond from second wheel unbelievable and that's what we said about a sprinter once they're popped that's it there's no coming back that's it and what a ride by Ella Harris she was dropped so many times and I knew she'd have a sneaky attack at some point and good on her for Got taking the, the win right. oh, yeah. Yeah, the amount of times she was dropped was extraordinary she clawed her way back and then she saw the finish line and she got a new lease of life Talk yeah. about the yellow jersey giving you an extra bit of strength. Well, that was just a phenomenal finish. I mean, how exciting. Ella Harris, that'll be the biggest win of her career, and uh, who knows where she's going to go from there. But uh, that is a display of never give up because so much can happen in the last 500 metres on a climb after 30 kilometres of climbing in your legs. Let's take another look at that final sprint for stage honours. So this was the moment where the yellow jersey finally was out of the picture. And then it looked like Lucy Kennedy was under a little bit of pre pre pressure. But the only person she needed to worry about here was behind her, and that was Jamie Gunning. And then Sarah Gigante in second spot, following Ella Harris. Sarah didn't put a foot wrong today. No, she it's very close. She just got outpowered in the end by Ella Harris. That was huge. And you can see there was a little look over the shoulder coming around that corner from Lucy Kennedy to just reconfirm yep this is it this is the move for the tour that she wanted to win so badly wearing number one surely felt a lot of pressure but uh, she was trying everything out there and at the end of the day she's going home with the yellow jersey from the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun tour for another year let's see next year if she can make it three in a row I'd love to know what she honestly thought one kilometre from the finish. I think she'll be super surprised by that effort then. But as you said, you know, the race isn't over until it's over. So full credit to her for still having another crack and not giving up there. How do you feel? Oh, my heart is racing. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that was an extraordinary finish. It's, and it is sometimes a lot harder to be on the mic watching a race, isn't it, than actually being in it. Oh, absolutely. My legs are all tingly. Yeah. Because yeah. you're in a no-control <laughs> position. As we spoke about before with a sports director, yeah. you can't influence the outcome from here. All you can do is yell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great moment in commentary of the Commonwealth Games back in 1990, and Steve Monaghetti was in commentary. And one yep. of his friends, Andrew Lloyd, was running the 5,000 metres. And at Bell Lap, he looked to be out of it. The commentary was going along normally. And then you heard Mona stop commentating and just go, Lloyd, yep. Andrew Lloyd, just started cheering. And he was riding him all the way home. And Andrew Lloyd won the gold medal. <laughs> that was you today. Yeah, I had to keep my tongue tied at the end there. But, yep. oh, that was just such an exciting finish. Falls Creek has turned it on. It was a real race of elimination in both the women's race and the men's race. But that performance today, Lucy Kennedy, she got there in the end. Every metre counts.
the finish line, Rochelle, is that the finish line? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Elena Sierra, I mean, she had a fantastic ride, but I think this would be one of the most painful races to watch back. You put yourself through so much pain for so, so long. You can see the finish line, but you just can't get there. It's going to be a very, very painful race for her to play back. I wouldn't even watch it if I was her. <laughs> I wouldn't want to replay that moment. Uh, I'd love to see a replay of a close-up on her face when Lucy did that final attack and she's gone, because she would have been praying no more attacks, let's just ride this, I can just ride this, and there was just zero reaction when Lucy got out of the seat The tank was empty, shortly we'll hear from Ella Harris and also Lucy Kennedy, stick with us, more to come from the Lexus of Blackburn, Herald Sun Tour The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Falls Creek, it not only has incredible road riding, but it also includes a world-class mountain bike park with over 40 kilometres of trails and a professional shuttle service, which has got a coffee shop at the pickup and the drop-off area. Falls Creek Village is considered the gateway to the pristine Bogon High Plains, featuring incredible history. The plains includes the oldest cattleman's hut in the high country, which is Wallace's Hut. And as you can see, the mountain biking here is exceptional. And today, it provided the backdrop to one of the best bike races you are ever likely to see. It's early in season 2020, but that one, Jessica Allen, will be hard to top, certainly for Lucy Kennedy. Yeah, what a spectacular finish that was, Matt. And uh, it was right down to the line. Stage results, Ella Harris taking out the win ahead of Sarah Gigante. It was then Lucy Kennedy followed by Jamie Gunning and Alina Sierra in fifth position in the space of 500 metres. She conceded 31 seconds to Ella Harris. How quickly it all falls apart when you blow up. One of the most exciting finishes we have ever seen in women's cycling. No doubt about that. And Elena Sierra, she will be super disappointed, but such an impressive ride. She's got to go give herself some credit for getting that 29 and a half kilometres up to Falls Ella Creek. Harris. And Ella Harris, what a phenomenal ride that was. Sarah Gigante, no surprises there. We knew that she would be there. And here's the top three in the general classification. Lucy Kennedy taking the win, 12 seconds ahead of it, Jamie Gunning. Uh, good to see that Alina Sierra stays on the podium inside the top three. It was then Ella Harris in fourth place. And rounding out the top five is Sarah Gigante. An impressive performance in the end by Lucy Kennedy. Incidentally, Jamie Gunning in second position. She'll take out the white jersey for the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification. David McKenzie, he's been down in amongst all the action, catching up with our winner. Ella Harris, what a stage. You were gone five times and you've won it. Uh, I'm speechless. I, I can't believe it. Like, at TDU and at Canals, I felt like I've always been really close to, to getting a result. And then I've had the legs. And then today, the start, I wasn't feeling so good. But... As it went on, I just kept clawing my way back to the bunch. They kept accelerating and I've got zero punch, so I keep getting dropped, but I kept just dieseling myself back on. And then with about 500 metres to go, I sensed that I felt like I had a little bit more power than everyone else. And I actually had that sensation on the stage two at going into Sterling and TDU, but I completely got swamped. So I was expecting the same thing to happen again today and to cross the line in first after 
getting dropped in the surprise crosswinds yesterday, I, I can't believe it and it means so much to me and I've got so many people to thank and yeah, I'm just, I'm just ecstatic, it's my first professional win and I've been wanting it for so long so yeah it's awesome. It is more than awesome, so many emotions, I mean that was a tough day, when did you start to believe that you could do this? Uh, only when I really saw the summit and I've got a little a little motto I like to use saying above and beyond it's it's sort of what I'm using to get through all my races this year and I just kept saying that to myself just above and beyond right to the line and I got there and as soon as I crossed the line and I've never been able to salute before so I had no idea what to do and my friends are probably teasing me right now but I'm just, yeah, so excited. Oh, well done. You can salute on the podium. Thank you very much. Awesome. Ella, your friends, they are not teasing you. They are celebrating with you. Jessica, Ellen, I always get disappointed when we see an athlete after they have a big success and they don't show any emotion. That was one of the best interviews I have ever seen. I loved every bit of it and I loved the emotion. Yeah, Ella Harris, she's a phenomenal bike rider, a super gutsy rider. I'm not surprised she kept crawling back today and I'm not surprised she got the win. So really, really happy for her. She's a lovely chick on and off the bike and she should be super, super proud with her efforts today. And I love the motto, above and beyond. beyond. Let's now hear from your teammate, the overall race winner, Lucy Kennedy. Lucy Kennedy, that's one of the most amazing last couple of kilometres. In fact, it was the last 500 metres... <laughs> Did you think you were going to get the job done with 500 to go? Uh, 500 to go, no, I wasn't sure. I mean, Elenis was so strong today. She was just following my every move. Um, and I just had uh, my DS in my ear just telling me to keep on going and she'll eventually crack. Uh, and she did eventually. And then when I saw that the two were in front of me, where I knew that they were split off yesterday. So I thought I had it then with a few hundred to go. You had to keep an eye on Jamie Gunning as well because she was there on same similar time, I think. So... Well, you, it was a, you, had to, you had to watch a, a few riders, didn't you? Obviously, you wanted to get rid of the yellow jersey, but then you had to make sure you finished close to, the, I guess, the winner of the stage. Yeah, I think there were four, about three or four in that group that still didn't lose any time yesterday. Alanis and Jamie, and, and they were basically just watching me. So I definitely felt like the marked rider today, and I just had to kind of trust in my strength and um, my climbing ability and know that I could hopefully crack them eventually. Back to back, how does it feel? Really, really, really satisfying. I was, I wouldn't say I was nervous actually. I wasn't nervous. I was excited and I was really motivated. And the team here were just amazing. It was, um, I never felt in, in, in trouble or I was always really calm. Even though we didn't have a full team, they were really strong and I just owe a lot of it to them. Congratulations. Thanks. Lucy Kennedy, the overall race winner. And Rochelle, I put that last response about not being nervous and staying calm down to not race experience but life maturity. Yeah, I think so. That's one thing that uh, Lucy's really got going for her. She's come late into the sport, but she's got everything in perspective. And I really liked the way and admired the way in the weeks coming into this that she was handling the pressure because she was thriving on it rather than getting nervous. And, you know, sometimes people will try and take pressure off themselves. And, and she really wanted this, and she said that, and she wasn't scared to, you know, speak out and say, look, we're going to do everything we possibly can, and I'm up for this. Let's take a look at the highlights from Tour Lay Stage 2 for the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. There was a change to the start of the race. It was meant to start at the top of Falls Creek, but instead it started at the bottom. It started at Mount Beauty, and Jessica Allen, it didn't take too long for the first bit of action. The opening intermediate sprint was after just two kilometres, and the action was all gone. It was full on from the gun mat, and with such a short race, it really is in women's cycling aggressive racing from the start. Wollaston took the first of the intermediate sprints. Peter Mullins was in second position. It was then in the peloton, there was a fall. Francesca Sewell was involved in the fall. So too one of the teammates of the race leader, Pataro from Astana, the race leader, Sierra. One of her teammates went down. We then saw the attack by Kate Perry for specialized women's racing. She went through the second of the intermediate sprints in first position and then impressively soaking up the points for second place, Ruby Roseman Gannon, who at the start of the day was wearing the white jersey for the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification. And Rochelle, she's been a standout this summer. Yeah, absolutely. And she has um, not failed to show her, um, her, the future ahead of her is massive. And she's done a fantastic job. She's been on the podium here yesterday in the sprint so that was a big step for her 
And uh, Kate Perry, also a very exciting rider and uh, a good effort to be out there by herself for a long time today. It was a bold move. The yellow jersey of uh, Alina Sierra. She didn't show any signs of cracking, Jessica Allen. She was riding really well within that group. Then we saw this really good attack by Bree Wilson. And for a little while, she was the virtual race leader. Yeah, Bree had an absolutely awesome ride today. She was out there by herself for most of the climb. And then unfortunately there, I think she dropped the chain with only a few kilometres to go. But hats off to her for a really gutsy performance out there. She tried to claw her way back. She had a top 10 finish on the stage. It was then attack time from number one, Lucy Kennedy. What about the reaction, though, from Alina Sierra in yellow? Yeah, she did everything she could, both uh, mentally and physically, because... You know, being right there on the wheel straight away, she knew she had to watch Lucy Kennedy and t she, you know, in that final attack that Lucy did, there was absolutely nothing left. She didn't show signs of weakness. She wouldn't dare show that to Lucy and that's what was confusing. I think Lucy was questioning with 500 metres to go. Here's, here's the move now. You see no reaction at all when Lucy goes from that, Sierra. So it was after 500. It was nearly 450. It was 450 metres to go and it was only when she set up that there was the first sign of Alina Sierra being under any pressure. Lesson number one out of today, do not play poker with Alina Sierra. She shows you nothing. It was then an incredible performance by the Kiwi, Ella Harris. She was dropped four times, maybe five times. She got back in contact with one kilometre to go. She saw the finish line and she left it all out there for a first ever professional win. And what a win it was at the top of a 30 kilometre climb to Falls Creek. Ella Harris, a heroic performance. Sarah Gigante in second position on the stage, then Lucy Kennedy in third place. And for Lucy Kennedy, that third place finish was enough to net her her second overall victory in the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. So does that mean, Jessica Allen, you get to join the team for celebrations tonight? I think so, yeah. We're uh, staying at the Middleton Winery again tonight. Definitely join them. <laughs> so I think we might have a nice champagne or a bottle of red to celebrate. I think you should. You have to celebrate your victories along the way, Rochelle. Absolutely. You have to really feel them. And unfortunately, sometimes you can't do that. If it's, um, you know, during the tour or you've got another classic race coming up, you have to stay very focused. And sometimes there'll only be three or four days between classics races. So, But I think for Lucy, this is a significant one because it was a big target for her. So I think she can uh, really relax tonight and enjoy the moment, really feel it before she puts her head down and gets ready for the next big target. Her celebrations are about to get started at the top of Falls Creek. Stay with us. The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Presentations are about to get started at Falls Creek. The stage winner, Ella Harris, we know she'll be all smiles. Once she's wiped the tears of joy away, I really did enjoy that interview. That's my favourite interview, is it, this year, or Cameron Meyer? Cameron Myers was pretty good at the national champion. I think Ella's second. She's on the podium for my favourite interviews so far. I like the ones with emotion. Well, she'll have the, the best motto then. Yeah, above, above and, and beyond. beyond. I like Matt Heyman's motto, always keep riding. Yeah, me too. I love that. I love that model a lot. It is a good one. We're just about set to get the presentation started, and uh, Lucy Kennedy will get her hands on that great trophy once again. In cycling, I love the trophies. We have the stone for Roubaix. You have the hat, the famous Basque hat, across at San Sebastian Classic, which Lucy Kennedy won last year. The wave at the Kidal Evans race along the Great Ocean Road, and the wheel for the Herald Sun Tour is a good one. Yeah, they're super special, man. If you can leave those in your house or have a nice room in your house, it just always brings back wonderful mem memories. Well, what's next for you? 
Uh, I head to Barcelona tomorrow, so I'm back to Europe. Um, I fly out of Melbourne, and the rest of the team will leave early next week as well. How long will you be out of action with this injury? Oh, just a week. I'll be back on the bike next week, and I kick off my season uh, at Hageland in Belgium in Ooh, about three and a half weeks. Oh, that'll be cold potentially. Oh, yes. We always expect the worst in Belgium, but we're ready for it. And why does she smile and get excited about that? Yeah, no, she does. She gets excited about that. It's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I it think, is a good thing. I think you do have to love the brutal weather in Belgium, um, particularly for the classics. It makes the racing, and if you don't like the hard weather, then, yeah, you're not going to win a lot of those races. It must be a real shock, or it must have at least been a real shock to your system early on, coming from Perth, which has such good weather, to then go to Belgium in an area where you can really perform well. Yeah, it's interesting. I think um, it's not just the weather in Belgium, it's the terrain. Um, it's really technical roads, and for myself, I do like the technical aspect of that racing. Former Junior World Champion in individual time trial, I think she's got a big future in the One Day Classics. Yeah, absolutely. Done her time too already as a domestique with uh, the Mitchell and Scott team. She's probably got a couple more years, can, but uh, yeah, big Can potential. you get a little more selfish? Oh, I've, I've got to go a lot stronger first, Matt. <laughs> I can't put my hand up to win races yet, but Lucy Kennedy sure can right here. Third on the stage today for Lucy Kennedy, the Mitchelton Scott colours, and you can see the Mitchelton logo with that famous towel that Lucy, along with Jessica Allen, will get to enjoy tonight. Second place on the stage today, Sarah Gigante, but the stage winner in the black colours for the New Zealand national team, Ella Harris. She still looks like she's in shock, Rochelle. Yeah, she's. Um, that was one of the most emotional, great interviews that we've ever seen. I had goosebumps. And just to see how much hard work goes into getting your first victory in a pro race. And for her, this is a big, big moment. It, it is significant. And that is, in many respects, for a lot of riders, we see it as that monkey off the back and it starts the ball rolling. Absolutely, once you've got your first big win under your belt. And it was nice to hear that she believed in herself too. It wasn't like, oh, she came back and she said, I felt like I had a little bit more power in the legs than the other riders. So she was a bit surprised she didn't get swamped, but she knew that she felt good, so. And I think it's significant the way she got it, Jess, in that she was dropped so many times, that she's gonna find herself in really difficult positions in races, and she can cast her mind back to this moment and say, I'm never out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You never know in bike racing when the legs feel good and when they feel bad. And you do have to keep mentally telling yourself that it's going to get better. And, you know, that's what she kept saying. And, and she did get better towards the end of the race. And she's put off a fantastic win. She could do with some more practice with the champagne, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, it's always a bit nerve-wracking, actually, on the podium for your first time with a bottle of champagne. We get to experience it at races like Bay Crits and things like that. But uh, if you're in a big pro race and it's your first time, you can get a little bit nervous. I've never opened a bottle of champagne before I was on a podium. Oh, really? Yeah. That was the first time? Yeah, at the bakery, it's, I remember. I couldn't do it because I shook the bottle before I loosened it off and the cork was just stuck there, so it was a bit embarrassing. And now the red jersey for the Shepherd and Quest Most Combative Prize. Kate Perry gets the prize as the most combative. I thought it might have gone to Bree Wilson, but it was Kate Perry for that early attack. And she was, in fairness, she was away for a long time. And it was in the black spot with our coverage, so we didn't see it. And it's actually pretty hard to argue with that decision for Kate Perry because she attacked well before the base of the climb and she was only caught around about 15 kilometres up the climb, halfway. So a big performance by Kate Perry. Yeah, she had a fantastic ride. She was also in that early breakaway with her teammate Taryn Heather as well. So she was off the front for most of the day. A solid performance and a good performance by her team. Her team was really active. Yeah, they had a great race and um, well deserved. Uh, and I think she has a really big future ahead of her as well. So Kate Berry, that's a name that we'll want to remember and we'll see in Europe, no doubt, uh, in the future. And her teammate, Jamie Gunning, she's managed to make it onto the podium and she's on the podium in the top three overall. And here she is now. She'll also be collecting the white jersey as the Visit Victoria best young rider and she has the classic climbers physique doesn't she oh doesn't she she's a bit of a string bean jamie gunning and yeah she really showed how strong she was on the climbs today and she's going to have a great future as well in the young riders classification there she's one to look at for the future and she thrived on the climb today she finished inside the top five on the stage she was always there and she was the threat to lucy kennedy in the end in fact she was in fourth position on the stage 
it's a little slippery getting back down those stairs, but she looked as if she was a little ginger going across the yeah, top of the just podium being as well. Very cautious, I think, on the uh, podium there can get a bit slippery. So up the champagne's been sprayed. And, and don't don't forget the legs are actually quite tired as well. Well, so they should be. It was a short stage today, but often the short stages leave you more fatigued because of the brutality of the stage. A longer day can be a more gradual burn, but the short ones like this can be really, really explosive. Well, this girl, I tell you what, I've seen gutsy rides before, but this is one for the ages in any bike race I've ever seen. She was gone four or five times. This is for the yeah, Queen of the Mountains classification, and it's the winner of today's stage. The go -take King of the Mountains for 2020. It is Ella Harris. Again, Ella Harris. He comes out to collect the Queen of the Mountains at classification. And this is the Go Tafe polka dot jersey, a category one climb today at the finish line. 24 points as she went across the finish line in first position. A couple of big rewards. Stage victory and the Queen of the Mountains jersey. Yeah, this is great for Ella Harris, for New Zealand and for her professional team, Canyon Shram. She's also come through the Swift Academy program. Um, so that is a huge win for them. Um, they've got some really strong riders as well with Jess Pratt this year too. Uh, so they're, it's proving that that program is really working. And Jessica Pratt, she's a rider that we saw in this race. She was still in the group when there was about 10 left. And then it was that first attack of Lucy Kennedy that saw her get distanced. She can still take a lot of confidence out of her performance today. Yeah, she had a great ride yesterday as well. So I think for Jess Pratt, um, now it's just uh, she's got a very good uh, team, pro team to develop in. And uh, like Jess said, that Swift Academy um, scholarship's proving to be very valuable. This is Alina Sierra. She is coming out to collect the Bright Brewery points classification, the green jersey for yesterday's stage winner. She finished in fifth position today. I wonder how she's feeling. Yeah, I mean, she did have mixed emotions. I'm sure she gave everything that she could possibly give, and uh, it can be a, a quite, quite a satisfying feeling when you know you've actually given everything you've got. I don't think there was anything more to give, so in that case, I yeah. think she'd be quite satisfied. And she didn't make a single tactical mistake either. No, she rode the perfect race, Matt, and I think if I was her, I'd be super proud of my performance, particularly holding on to a rider like Lucy Kennedy, who's one of the best climbers in the world, and... Just a phenomenal ride by her. I don't think many people actually expected her to hold on for that long. Well, let's say, I mean, it could have been an easy option for her to say, look, this is just not for me. I'll just turn myself inside out for a teammate and see how far they can go. But, uh, I mean, hats off for, for trying to defend that jersey. Um, I think she had a great ride. At Jolico, they come out to collect the team's classification. And they were a team that we didn't really mention them much, but they were always just kind of there and staying in that group. A team made up predominantly of Mexicans with one rider from Chile, another from Costa Rica. And it's nice to see them pick up a prize. Yeah, it's great. They've come a long way to be here in Australia, so it's fantastic for them to get the team award and consistency pays off with them. We saw them at the uh, Tour Down Under, also at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. They had a late sponsor change at the back end of December as a sponsor fell through. It was meant to be supporting the team, but they have good support now. Hopefully they have a big season ahead of them. And I hope they get a few opportunities to race in Europe. Yeah, great end to their summer campaign in Australia. And they look very, they'll go home very happy celebrations tonight for that team award. And I think strategically, there's a couple of corks still in those bottles. Yep, saving those ones for tonight. A good decision. So an outstanding performance by that squad, but the uh, biggest winner of all, of course, it's the yellow jersey, and that is Lucy Kennedy. And for her last year, it was a big step at getting that victory. And I think, it won't be fair to ask you this, I think today she's made a big claim for a spot on the Australian team at the Tokyo Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. She's so reliable. And when she's under pressure now, she's shown that she can deliver the goods. So I think she'd be a very uh, safe bet for Amanda Sprout and the Australian national team. So, um, you know, there's limited numbers there. So Amanda Sprout probably has a ride already, plus three riders. So it's um, hard, hard fought to get places on that team. Uh, it would be impossible not to pick Amanda Sprout for the Australian <laughs> national team to go to the Olympics, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's it. Sprout is really been focusing on the Olympics and there's a lot of races she's focused on but this year the Olympics is a big target for her. And for the last two years Amanda Spratt she's been on the podium at the World Championships last year it was a bronze medal the year before it was a silver medal and on each occasion Rochelle it's been a Dutch woman who has won the race so her least favorite color at the moment is orange.
This is the top three in the overall classification. On the right-hand side of the screen is Alina Sierra. To the left is Jamie Gunning. And about to step out in the middle to collect the yellow jersey is Lucy Kennedy. Middle distance running. It's loss is cycling's game. That's it. It's super great to have Lucy in the professional peloton with us now. Alexis of Blackburn. They've been supporting this race for the last few years. They also support the Bay Cycling Classic. They provide the vehicles for the Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race. They've supplied all the support vehicles for this event as well. They've been great supporters of cycling in general, particularly women's cycling. And that's the trophy I was talking about. I like that one, Michelle. Yeah, I wonder if that one will go over to Europe or if they'll uh, keep it here in Australia. My guess is it might end up staying at the Mitchell and Wines location. Well, they'll be hoping that the name that goes on the front will be Damien Housen and the name that goes on the back is already Lucy Kennedy. On the front, they have the honour roll for the men's race. On the back, they have the honour roll for the women's race. And the reason that it is that way around is because the men's race started in 1952 and then when the women's race started, they said, let's keep the honour roll on the trophy together, which I think is a good initiative. Well, celebration time for Lucy Kennedy. Jessica Allen, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It's been yeah, here. Really a little stressful at the end? Very stressful. <laughs> My heart's still racing, but oh, it was a great bike race. It was a brilliant race, wasn't it, Rochelle? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, we've seen some fabulous women's races, but today was one, one up the top there. That was a very exciting race. So thanks, Jess, for, for joining us. And yeah. It was very nerve-wracking coming into the finish, but uh, yeah, a great race again for the women. It was a brilliant edition of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour, and Lucy Kennedy, for the second year running, gets to put her name on the honour roll. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.